Welcome back to our 5 o'clock news with this bone-chilling weather warning. Winter is coming, and you know what this means? It's hunting season for a nab. Every fall, these invasive species come out of their crusty, dusty slumber looking for a place to nest for the winter. They go by many names. But in the winter months, they're mostly referred to as hobosexuals. Here's a chart for reference. And as you can see from our dustometer, we are expecting record-breaking highs this year. So get ready for the influx of dust coming your way. Now, if you live in these hot zones, you can expect love bomb showers with boxed mac and cheese and hot dogs. False promises of grandeur that we are all too familiar with, for example. And I quote, my album is about to drop soon, babe. Or my personal favorite, you're my ride or die. I promise you once I make it to the top, I'ma make you my wife. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> Let's get back to it. Some nocturnals come with a mirage of infinite thrust power. Others may even come with temporary waves of actual decent human behavior. You can see them simulating tasks like cooking, cleaning, taking out the trash, doing the laundry, and folding them. It's almost like they are capable of mimicking functioning human adults. Please be aware that once they grab on, they leech on to you, your car, and your house. As we've seen from previous reports, these are all a farce. And each and every year, the levels of audacity get stronger and stronger, making it more difficult to repel them. Don't allow them to get into your home or they will never leave. The good news is you can do something about it. We strongly advise to get strapped with your Dustbuster 3000. Get your protective gear in order by remembering this acronym. SBE, Standard Boundaries and Expectations. Like having a job, having a home, taking care of his kids. Whether he's involved majority of the time or only part of the time, he should be taking care of his offspring. And that's all we have for you today. Winter is certainly coming. Regardless of the season, whether you call them a nab, hobosexual, or a bandit, a bandito in Spanish, these parasites must be tamed at arm's length. Don't let the winter bug get you ladies. Stay safe out there. One should always check. One should always check before we put these out here. Okay, let me just say this. Let, let's talk for a quick second. I need advice, and I need advice now. Me. I need advice, and I need advice now. <clears throat> I need you all to tell me. Ah. Uh, Y'all love to hear a period. I was on the Discord today. I was working and getting it done all day today. My head, my head hurts. They, the lady stretched my hair. Um, and I'm pretty sure all of my hair is going to break off when I, um, when we undo this. Because I, I did, one, I didn't know my hair was this long. Two, um, it, it shouldn't be this. <laughs> I love your hair and the commercial. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate Oh, hey, Sin. You inspired this video. But because I don't want to be on here for forever, um, I'm going to hurry up and ask for your advice. Sin, everyone give Sin the warmest welcome you possibly can. Please remember to go subscribe to her channel. Uh, the Revolution Will Not Be Televised. I linked it in my community post multiple times, including today. And... Moderators, can you drop her channel link, please? All right. So that's the first thing. And throughout the video, we're going to, I'm going to remind you to go to our channel and um, subscribe. That's the first thing, because I'm going to be over there, hopefully, and alive when she invites me. The second thing is, and this is the advice. I need advice. Ready? All right. <clears throat> so... As a person who believes that we should do no harm and that we should be kind to people, I am now in a pickle because it has recently come to my attention that someone I like, 
um, has been talking all kinds of mess about me behind the scenes, right? Just dragging me, trashing me. And the person who told me wasn't trying to snitch. They were just kind of like, look, I just need you to know this. And I appreciate them letting me know, right? Because whenever I'm in the presence of the person who talks so much mess about me, they give me all kinds of praise. <laughs> ah! Girl, if any, if it was you, I would drag you. <clears throat> In, in my face, they're, they're like, you are the best, blah, blah, blah. Just compliment after compliment after compliment. Thankfully, that does nothing to me, right? <clears throat> and so now I'm in a place where this person doesn't, if they're here, if they're not here, if whatever, it doesn't really change anything about who I am. I just don't want to really hurt that person. And so I am in a place now where I'm like, do I silently cut this person off? Do I engage with this person? And how do I engage with this person? Because I feel like they should know I know they were talking mess about me. Like, I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to be in my face playing. Like, I, 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 feel, I feel like you should know that I know. Like, PSA, if you are talking mess about me, I know. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I want to let them know, because, like, I don't like being fake with people back. Like, I don't, like, in my mind, I want to cut you up, but I also don't want to hurt you. But I also don't want to, like, smile around you and pretend like I like you anymore. Because I, I like you as a human being, but, like, I'm kind of over you. Like, so I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to confront them about it. Um... I know I'm, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, let me not lie. Giggles, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I did. So I need to go find... Um, I did create a... Um, I created a Cash App account for YouTube. I did, I did, I did. And I will share that with you guys on my next live stream. I feel really bad. Like, I know I have it, but I still feel bad. I don't like YouTube getting any money off of this channel, off of your hard work. But I also don't want it to come directly to me. So type in capital letters. <laughs> type in capital letters, and I will know that you're telling me that I need to look at your comment. Because, like, anyway, ugh. Did they approve and show the, you that you were being dragged? Um, so the person who told me didn't prove anything, but I trust them. Like, I trust the person who told me. But they didn't prove anything. But before they told me, I had screenshots of something that that person had said previously. And I was like, maybe they were mad at me. And they said this, right? And the person who sent the screenshot the first time, I don't know them like that. So, like, I don't really care about your opinion of someone who I'm closer to. And so they sent me a screenshot of something that person had said. And I was like, yeah, people get upset. They talk poorly about other people. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Then this person I trusted came to me and said, look, this is what is happening. Do with it what you will. And I was like, okay maybe I should take, maybe I should do something about this. <clears throat> but yeah, there was proof that they had said nasty things previously. Um, if it's a person known for being dramatic and in drama, you should just pay them dust so it will... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's not YouTube. This is not much... If this was about a content creator on YouTube, I would not have brought it to you. Let's be... Just putting it out there, nothing to do with anyone on YouTube at all. Nothing to do with anyone on YouTube. This is not a YouTube thing. If it were a YouTube thing, I promise you, I would be handling this privately. Actually, I wouldn't address it at all. Um, if this was a YouTube thing, I no. This is nothing to do with YouTube. So, yeah. Thank you, Sin, actually, because I now that you said that I, it triggered that I needed to say that because I would hate for anyone, <laughs> any 
any of my YouTube colleagues to think that I'm talking about them. Nothing to do with YouTube. Oh, then I would surely confront them. All right. I will. All right. So that's that. Thank you all. <laughs> Really, Thibis, you should have led with this. Hit me out here. Have me out here. <laughs> I am so sorry. I am. I am so sorry. I should have said this had nothing to do with you, YouTube. Um, I don't do YouTube drama. Anyone who is having wars and fights with me, they're doing that by themselves. Like, I don't know. Ew. That's, that's definitely... I don't see a lot of things are beneath me, but that's beneath me. I'm not about to go back and forth. Absolutely not. Until you start paying my bills. Like, why would I address you publicly? Ew, no. Um, so no, 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 no. Um, personal stuff. All right. Funny story. <clears throat> you know how people say when you have different color eyes, people just open their eyes and just want you to compliment them on their eyes when it's a different color? Um, I went out with a couple of friends, right? And this guy, black guy, um, he put he is not like my friend necessarily. He's just a friend of the someone in the group, right? <clears throat> he we've met multiple times before, never seen this man with hazel eyes ever in my life. He has brown dark brown eyes, just like me, or whatever. We are now all at coffee, and he has hazel contacts in. Completely fine with this, do you? So he's like opening his eyes. Like he's like literally just opening in his eyes when he's talking and just looking into people's eyes. And so I was like, should I should I bite? Uh, let me bite. So I was like, oh, I didn't realize you have hazel eyes. <laughs> Wait. Sorry, this is not even that funny. This is not even that funny. I was like, oh, I didn't realize you have hazel eyes because you, you literally wanted someone to say something, so I did. I didn't realize you had hazel eyes. He goes, oh, who, me? Are my eyes hazel? And he goes and pulls up his phone to look at his eyes. And he's like, I don't think they're hazel. So this is me. I have two options right now. I can engage passively and be like, oh, yeah, no, they are hazel. Or I could be like, oh, whatever. Those are the two options I have. Either engage with him passively or aggressively engage with him. I decided... <laughs> I decided to just turn to Rebecca. <laughs> this is a white lady. Her name is not actually Rebecca. To turn to Rebecca, and I was like, oh, what kind of coffee do you want? I'm just going to go order the coffee for us. Completely ignored him having a, t like, a thing over there. And everyone kind of picked up on what I was doing, so we all kind of like moved on. This happened this week, by the way. <clears throat> We all just moved on and just ignored him, right? Two minutes into the conversation, he comes back. Y'all, is my eyes really hazel? I did I didn't notice that. So I was like <laughs> 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 are my eyes really hazel so i was like um i don't know if your actual eyes are but the contacts I'm sorry. Themis, um, someone asked, wait, are no, none of my mods here? Where are my mods? Oh, I don't know. They probably don't like my show. <laughs> my, my, my moderators, my moderators, <laughs> my moderators, 
My moderators probably don't like my show. Let me find out. Let me go check the Discord. He comes back. Yeah. Moderators, can you please um, be here? I don't know. Uh, if there are no moderators at the in the middle of the show, remind me and I will mod some more people because we do need moderators. I mean, I don't know if we need moderators today, but whatever. So, yeah. I said, um, I don't know what your actual eye color is, but them contacts are definitely hazel. Now, when he, he looked at me like he wanted to fight, and I don't fight. So you go fight yourself, because I'm not about to do that with you at all. Um, <laughs> so that's what I wanted um, to share with you. <clears throat> There's another video that is of import. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> no let me leave my mom alone <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to share with you um, a very interesting conversation that I had with a 32 year old client of mine it's my hope that what I share with him is a help to you the way it was a blessing to him he's 32 years old new client no children he is dating a woman who is 35, also no children. They've been dating for about, he said, three years. Um, this was his first time in counseling. Um, he said that she has been in therapy for the last two years. So this is his first time she's been in therapy the last two years. He said to me, um, Doc, I'm coming to you because I've watched a couple of your videos. I was a little hesitant. He said, because I didn't know if you would really um, understand me. I thought that was interesting. I said, uh, so what's up? He said, well, I'm really coming to you. He said, because I love her, but I really can't get her to fully submit to me. So I paused and kind of looked and I said, okay. Um, I said, what do you mean by fully submit? And um, <laughs> you're a weak. No, let me stop. Let me stop. You're a doctor. So you have to approach this with care and gentleness. You know, I kind of laughed when I asked that. He said, in all things, he said, not just physically, uh, but to trust me to lead her. I said, lead her how? He said, you know, in the decisions that we make, in the life we're planning, you know, I want her to uh, defer to my judgment and trust me to make the decision that's going to be best for us, that's going to lead us in the right direction. I said, okay. Um, I said, that's your idea of leading a woman? He said, you know, Doc, I'm not saying she can't have ideas. I'm not saying, you know, she can't have suggestions or opinions at all. I don't want her to be a hermit and just be quiet. He said, but I am saying that I want her to trust me and my ability um, to make the final decision and call in everything we do. I said, in everything? He said, yes, sir. I said, um, so you're saying to me that the final decision in everything you all do should reside with you. Is that correct? I want to make sure I'm clear. He said, yes, sir. I said, what was her response? He says, um, when I told her this, the last, the first time I told her this, he said, which was about a year and a half ago, he said, we've been arguing ever since. <laughs> I said, um, that's interesting. I said, beyond arguing, what has she been saying? He said, frankly, when they first argued about it, she looked him in the face and said, you're not ready to leave me. I said, she said that to your face? He said, yeah. I said, you didn't listen? He said, no. I said, why? He said, because I feel like I am ready to lead her. I said, okay. Do you know my five areas of healing that lead to wholeness? He said, yes, sir. He said, I've watched your videos. I said, now let me ask you this. He said, how do I measure up? I said, nope. I don't want to know how you measure up. I said, how does she measure up to the five areas of healing? He said, well, mentally. And you know, she's really strong. She um, she shows up in spaces really clear minded. He says emotionally, she's very emotionally stable. She doesn't argue a lot. She doesn't live in her feelings, he said, which was really attractive to me. He said, because, you know, as a woman, women, he said, women can be very emotional. And I said, that's correct. And it doesn't mean anything bad. Men are from Mars. Women are from Venus. That's correct. I said, but her emotions, she could control them. He said, absolutely. He said, spiritually, she's very solid spiritually. She has a strong prayer life. She's very involved. 
uh, in her spirit life, not just in church, but she does a lot for the community. I said, great. I said, what about physically? He said, man, she definitely checks the boxes physically. I said, what about financially? He said, oh, yeah, she's she's an entertainment attorney. She makes about $20,000 a month. I said, cool. I said, what do you do? He said, I'm a construction manager. I make about 100K. I said, cool. That's cool. I said, so you all were both doing this when you first met, correct? In terms of your occupations. He said, yes, sir. I said, so what changed? He said, I have no idea. I said, let me ask it another way. What do you think attracted her to you? He said, you know, well, it's probably me, you know, physically, man. He said, you know, I, I'm a pretty masculine man. I said, what does that mean? He said, you know, I'm strong. You know, I have strength. You know, I'm a, I'm a leader. He said, you know, you know, I'm a problem solver. I, I said, okay, <laughs> give me three things or three ways you've grown over the last year. And I don't want those things to be physical and I don't want them to be financially based. So take physical off the list, take financial off the list, name three ways you've grown in the last three years. He sat there, he thought, literally maybe 30 seconds passed by. I waited patiently. He said, Doc, I know I've grown. I said, no, 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 no. Give me three tangible ways you've grown that are non-financial and non-physical over the last three years. He couldn't do it. I said, I asked you a question earlier and I said, what do you think attracted her to you? And, you know, you said your, your physical presence or whatever. I said, but, but listen to me. She may have been attracted to you physically and he's a nice looking gentleman. He makes a good living. Doesn't make as much as her, but he, he doesn't have to. And I said that to him. I said, you know, you're an attractive gentleman. You make a good living. I said, but she wasn't with you for your money. So this debunks the whole idea that a man has to make more. She knew she was she was an entertainment attorney when she met you. She was making 200 or more than 200K when she met you. If my math is right, 20 times times 12 is more than 200K. So she was making more than 200K when she met you. You were only making 100K when she met you. So it wasn't your money because she made more. Could have been your looks. I said, but something else was there that attracted. And probably the looks and a good living was enough for her to be attracted I said, but something changed. Do you know what that is? He looked confused and said, no, sir, I don't know. I said, two things happen. You didn't change. You didn't grow. And she did. He said, no, I, I dispute that. I said, give me three ways you've changed in the last three years that are not physical and financial. He was still stopped. Doc, I know I've grown, man. I'm not the same man I used to be. I said, give me a tangible example. He struggled. I said, let me help you out. And let's just cut to the chase. Have you ever been five years old before? He started laughing and said, here we go. I said, yeah, you know what's coming. Have you ever been five years old? He said, of course. I said, have you ever been seven? I said, yeah. I said, have you ever been 10? He said, yes. I said, have you ever been 15? I'm not, I'm not doing this. The reason I'm not doing this, I just realized how long it took him to get to the point. I'm not doing this. What you should have done is tell him, ain't nobody about to lead. Ain't, there is no one that's going to allow you to lead them when you don't know where you're going, one. Two, that person is living, created a great full life for themselves. Why would they then have someone who is doing worse than them financially? tell them how to run their life. No one is about to do that. You should have told him, shouldn't have walked him there, just tell him. There are men in the comment section mad at this. I don't know if he's a psychologist or what he is, but they are mad at him for not telling the woman to submit. They are mad at him who have been with this woman, talking about this woman, talking to this woman in whatever story, true or not. They're asking how he knew that that woman has grown. <clears throat> this is not about her. It's about him. Why, wh why does he want someone to, quote unquote, submit to him? Why? And then he doesn't know why people are upset at him. Why the woman now is like, what do you mean you want me to submit? I'm an attorney doing well, and you are also in your respective field doing well. 
what are we talking about? What are we talking Like, no, no, absolutely not. Just useless. And not him being useless, but just the people in the comments talking about women just need to submit. The therapist or person right here decided that he was going to explain rightfully that because you were born male and you are a man does not mean you are the de facto leader. <laughs> the fact that that has to be explained to people is a problem. So putting that aside... <clears throat> I'm not going to put this up because we're already way over time and I need to get into the video that we actually need to get into. But that aside, women have decided that they were going to come up with a list of criteria for having children, something about a ring, um, having money to pay for all kinds of things. And I'm sitting there reading the comments and people, are, men again, are upset that women are creating quote unquote standards for the kinds of relationship and men that they are now going to have children with if they decide to have children. And I'm confused as to why people are upset about this. Isn't the mantra that women should vet better? So when women decided, oh, you know what? Maybe we should vet better. And this is how we're going to vet. We're going to create a standard. Like We're going <laughs> to have a beer minimum standard. <laughs> He has to have a job. <laughs> I should be able to take off from work if I'm get pregnant. <laughs> Those are the like, the one thing was about plastic surgery um, after the child, but there was something about having therapists on call after they've given birth for uh, postpartum, right? And I'm sitting there like, these look very reasonable to me. Look, look let me just be clear. I am not a woman, <clears throat> obviously, but if I were, I am not about to sacrifice my life and my ability to go out into the world through having children just because. Anyway, so the premium seems to be really low because I think the community decided, you know what, everyone, we're just going to have children, blah, 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 whatever, right? Which is fine. Do you. I'm not telling you how to be. I'm saying, if I were a woman, mm -mm, nope, <laughs> you can't afford it. <laughs> you can't afford it. Absolutely not. Y'all getting mad about people saying you should have a job. You should figure out therapy after I've given birth because who knows what's going to happen. You should be able to provide for me. I should be able to take off work if I am carrying the child because I might get sick. These are like random criteria, which I feel like is very, I feel like it's like minuscule. Like I feel like it's the beer minimum. But Men are mad. So when they tell you that you should vet better and have standards, they don't actually they don't actually believe you should. And I find that frustrating. They're mad because the standards will eliminate a lot of the Yeah. Yeah. I do know that. And that's the problem. And that's why people coming on here talking about, oh, you should vet better, you should have standard, and then you look at them and you're like, any standard would eliminate you, specifically you. You don't then get to tell people to have standards you can't meet. Because when we decide to say, okay, here's a standard, you're going to be mad because you can't meet it and you won't have access. Messy. <clears throat> Absolutely messy. Um, we'll catch the mess on replay. Oh. I don't like missing my people. All right. So now that that's out of the way, <clears throat> welcome everyone. Grab your coffee, water, tea. This is ginger um, and lemon tea. I hope that's ginger and lemon tea. Um, and we are going to watch Destiny. I'm going to speed it up a little bit because we're going to watch the entire thing. And moderators, please make sure that I don't stay over four hours on here. That's ridiculous. At this point, that is ridiculous. Um, Chubby Chan, welcome. Oh, you've been a member for, four, I don't know, I just said welcome, for 14 months. Thank you. All right. So let's get into the mess.
It's not that messy, but let's get into it. See you on the other side of the intro. All right. So I was talking, I, I talked to Sin and I was like, I never got to finish the video with um, Destiny talking to Angry Man and some other people. I never got to finish it. Um, and after she premiered her video and I was like, you've already done this. Should I do it? Um, she was like, oh, we don't, ain't nobody care. <laughs> do it. So um, I'm going to, she triggered the memory that I didn't finish um, my, my review of it. And so I'm going to start from the top because that was like almost a year ago. So no, no, no one remembers that foolishness. <clears throat> Well, actually, first there's like, what, so what was your position yesterday? You you obviously came through the Bernard Riley show and had issue, I guess, with something he said, or you had debated Myron or something. And your position was that women have evolved and men are stuck in the past. That, that was your, your position? Um, in regards to like who needs to do um, what for like, um, like in the broadest sense, red pill people seem to give advice about how men and women operate and like what they need to do to succeed, what men need to do to succeed. And I tend to disagree with a lot of the framing. And part of it plays into kind of what you just said, yeah. Okay, so what part of the framing do you have a disagreement about? Um, I feel like men need to work a lot more on relationship skills. They just don't have much practice with. And it feels like for red pill communities, the obsession is like just be more traditional or become a top one percenter. Um, which is advice for like 1% of the population. I don't think it's like a, a road to success. Um, I've just been. Okay. I think, it, um, I mean, I would disagree. Do you want to talk about that or? Um, well, no, I, I really wanted to debate you about what we're talking about as far as the, um, as far as this whole step, because correct me if I'm wrong, you have this concept that women have evolved and improved and, and made these changes and these leaps and bounds, and they kind of have just left men in the dust, right? A little bit, yeah. So how, how would you, how? I'm trying to understand. Uh. <laughs> I almost forgot how funny this was the first time I watched it. <clears throat> because the first time I watched it, I was really sad. <clears throat> I was really sad because it just felt like this was a representation of me. And then now I'm like, ah, no, it's not. Absolutely not. I reject that. So he's not understanding what it means that women are like building past. Women are building past men, essentially, and um, outpacing men generally, but specifically for the Black community. The issue here, <clears throat> and I don't know if they get into it. I don't remember if they got into this. However, there is a conversation that is taking hold online about the lonely man epidemic. Um, and I find it to be really frustrating. It is really frustrating because the framing of the conversation is not about how men can actualize individually, how men can come together as quote unquote men and learn together and develop together. It is done and it's being discussed as a po like in direct opposition to women, as if women somehow are expected to prevent men from loneliness. <laughs> to, <laughs> to prevent men from being lonely. And that's a very odd thing. But obviously, people need companionship. But if you want to be with women, you probably need to figure out what women want and make yourself compatible and figure out how to work together. But that's not the only kinds of relationship that exists. And if you're lonely as a man, that doesn't feel like a woman problem. If women are getting standards, if women are able to go into the workforce and make their money, and now they require something different, you can choose to be the something different, or you can hold steadfast your tradition and your masculinity. You can hold on to that, 
but then don't blame women for not wanting that. You know what I mean? Don't blame women for not wanting aggression. Don't blame women for wanting to feel peace when they come home and not have to be, quote unquote, the peace. Don't blame women for wanting people who are emotionally mature and able to articulate their feelings. I'm speaking in a, a sort of general sense here, but the conversation seemed to suggest that the way in which women are self-actualizing runs counter to, war, to men's access to them. And men are saying they still want access and they want women to do what? Not actualize? Like, I don't like the framing of the conversation around male loneliness. Figure out how to find friendships. <laughs> Figure out how to find friendships with other men. Like, I feel like that, it's not simple, but I feel like that's what the conversation should be about as opposed to why women don't want to be with men. Like, I feel like that's what it's supposed to be about. <clears throat> also, the more y'all talk about it, the more women create OnlyFans and take your money. So there is that. <laughs> uh, um. So I think that... Uh... I think that for a long time, uh, the world was kind of like built by and built for, for pushing in different ways in society to achieve and succeed and do better. And it was previously thought that, like, while women can't attain educational levels similar to men, there are a lot of things that men can do that women can't do, and are able to do a lot of these things. So we're seeing women right now, strong men in what we have brains, they're actually better than best. Then we're kind of like setting women up for success better than we are even setting men up for success. Let's start to have a conversation about what to do to like make men successful. So as women have kind of like improved their lot and standing in society through things like school, reproductive control, better career opportunities, men are kind of like sitting here like, well, what am I supposed to do? Um, people have cried about toxic masculinity for two decades. A job is not enough to secure a wife anymore. I have no idea idea what to do or where to go to in society that seems to be like where guys are stuck at rhetoric and then like appeals to tradition or appeals to try to become the top one percent like that's my issue like that's not good advice okay right yeah okay well there's a couple of things wrong with what you said number one women are not blowing men out of the water when it comes to education we've actually been lowering the standards for them to actually be able to achieve certain things they've actually lowered the standards when it comes to uh, uh a lot of the different a lot of different studies they've lowered the standards when it comes to uh the barrier to entry when it comes to the military numerous things so it's not that women are blowing men out of the water, it's that we're catering to them, which we have always done. The men haven't really built the world for themselves. The majority of the inventions and the things that we've come up with, we've came up with in order to make life more comfortable for women. So it's not that they're blowing us out of the water. And it's Someone said it's borging. <clears throat> um, let's see. Can you guys hear me? Am I borging or is the video borging? Dumb argument. It's you, Themis. It's better now. Um, let me see if I if I can do it like this. <clears throat> I know what's wrong. It's not that the men actually have uh, are stuck in a position. What men have found is they live in a world now where the focus has been on women and catering to women while simultaneously ostracizing men and making them feel like they're not worth anything or they don't have any value. When men, by and large, still do many of the jobs that maintain the infrastructure of our society. Um, okay, so the part about lowering standards, I, I don't agree with that. I would have to look into it more, but um, my familiarity with lowering the standards is, I know that there have, has been research done for- Nope, dumb, 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 dumb. Useless argument, quickly saying, if they lowered the standard, unless you're saying they lowered the standard for women and not for men, that doesn't make sense because they're all in the same classes. If you're in university and they lowered the standard for women, that would mean it's easier for you as a man, right? Now explain why you're not competing at the level then. If they have lowered the standard for women and you're taking the same exams, shouldn't you be doing better than these women? That don't make sense. So I don't know why Destiny go off into this example, but it's fine.
for University of California schools, where for certain affirmative action programs, they would lower the standards to get more minority students, um, namely African-American students, to enroll in these colleges. But when they lowered the standards there, what would happen is, is more of those students would apply and get accepted to the colleges, but the graduation rates and absolute numbers stayed the same. So they were getting into school, but then they were flunking out because the standards were lowered and they weren't, they weren't able to attain the degree. So if they were lowering the standards and more women were getting accepted, but they weren't graduating, then I might agree with you, but that's not the case. We're talking about graduation rates right now. If the standards were lowered, and that's what was, was allowing women to graduate more, then um, we would see men graduating at the same rates as they were before, but they aren't, right? Especially over the coronavirus period, a lot of men were expected to stay home and work, whereas women didn't have those same uh, burdens placed on them. Also, women have a bit more available to them in the, in the world of like affirmative action and kind of like assistance for women to go to school. You are seeing women, not just because the standards are lowered, but because society's pushing them in a direction. They are doing better in school, like full stop. Well, here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the reality about that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not that difficult to do better in school when you're taking gender studies or getting a degree in basket weaving. Or, or, is that across the board in STEM or is that across the board in gender studies? Yes, it is across the board in STEM. Yeah, yes, yes, it is. You don't need to be in STEM, but because he brought up STEM, yes, it is also across the board in STEM. So there is that. And other things like that, arbitrary stuff that really doesn't amount to anything. First of all, you have to realize that when it comes to education, the enrollment of men is down across the board anyway. Because like I said before, we live in a society now that is very hostile towards men. So there are a lot of different things that men don't want to be a part of anymore. They don't want to be a part of college, uh, uh, college experience anymore, simply for the fact that it's a hostile environment for them. Everything is about toxic masculinity and all of this crap. And, and let's be honest, the colleges are no longer uh, uh, institutions of higher learning. They now be. This is going to happen for a while, isn't it? <clears throat> because I realized why I also was upset the first time I watched this. Make an argument. Like this, this feels so emotional that it's hard to decipher. Like, this is not something you can argue with, right? You're going to have to break, stop him and break down each part of what he says and ask him, oh, what do you mean by this? When, when you, <laughs> what examples do you have for this? What is the research behind this? Doing all of that takes too much work because he's not currently making an argument. He's just, venting frustration which by the way i'm like i think we should all be fine with people being frustrated but he doesn't understand why he's frustrated he decided to blame women and now he's arguing from that place of blaming women without fully understanding what is happening as a man in today's society you don't feel heard why other men aren't listening to you maybe Maybe women aren't listening to you, or maybe you don't know how to communicate effectively, so you recognize that people don't know what you're feeling, but you don't understand that it's because you can't articulate what is wrong. That could be it also. I wish Destiny would have asked him to pr provide provide an example of how society caters to women and disenfranchised men. I wished that too. Honestly, I wish that too. Let's become institutions of indoctrination with gender studies and all of this other crap that most men can't really identify with, especially with their red-blooded American males. They, they find this, this, this whole thing that's going on right now extremely hostile. And, and when you talk about women uh, graduating, right? I don't know, I can't speak to the whole spectrum of women, but I do know when it comes to the black community, Yes, black women are the most enrolled. And yes, they do graduate, but they usually graduate with some ridiculous degree that they don't even use. Not to mention the fact that women that actually... Not true. We did this. Not going to do it again. But no, that's, that's not true. We can go into STEM and black women are, are pacing black men. They are also creating better lives. Like, I don't, I don't know what you mean by useless degrees, but keep going. We do become entrepreneurs. 90, 96% of their freaking businesses fail. So no, they're not outpacing men. They just live in a society that has stacked the deck against men and catered to them. Every single program that comes out now is for women. Okay, so I hear this This argument is brought up a lot that women just get degrees in like basket weaving and gender studies. Do you, do you sincerely believe that that's the majority types of degrees that women are getting? Or I'm just trying to figure out before I go down that road. So, like, you believe, so you believe most women, when they enroll in college, they go into STEM? Uh, I didn't say STEM, but you know that there's more than just STEM and basket weaving, right? Okay, well, my thing is, my thing is, and I've stated this numerous times on my show, I think if you're not going into the STEM field, college is a waste of time and waste of money. All right, so if you're going to be a social worker, if you're going to be a lawyer, like the 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 <laughs> a teacher, the professions just keep going. If you're not going into... You know what? Yes, he is a hater. There, 
I really dislike this because even if you have um, an ulterior motive, right, and you're being toxic, one would assume that you go and put your argument down on paper and you test your theories. Uh, one would assume that you're able to articulate reasons as to why you want a specific outcome and dislike another kind of outcome, right? This is the kind of um, academic work that we do to sort of analyze our beliefs and test them. We don't even have to go to the public place of ideas, right? The public place. Um, in public, we don't have to talk about that which we have. So instead of saying the marketplace of ideas where we're like trading, you don't come publicly, even on your own platform, to talk about the things that you are coming up with in your head after you smoke or whatever you do. You don't talk about it because by the time it gets there, you have analyzed from multiple vantage points your own theories, and you've analyzed it so much that you realize, oh, wait, I can't defend this. By the time you realize you can't defend it, you will have stopped yourself from going public about certain kinds of idea, and you don't even get to engage in the quote-unquote marketplace of ideas because you can't, you cannot with good faith, back up that which you're saying. And if you can't do that, you probably should sit on it longer. I'll throw it away. I grieve entitlement. The live show. Actually, it should change my, the, the name of the, the, um, the thing. Okay, that's fine if that's your opinion, but one, that's not true. And two, there are other purposes to college. Right? You can make money outside of well, we STEM. Can say, we, can say that, we can say that it's not. First of all, if you look at the way college is set up now, and you look at the amount of student loan debt that you're going to get into after four years at a university, going for anything other than STEM absolutely is a waste of time. Okay, you're, you're, there's, okay. one, you're assuming that, there's something about assumptions, I'm sorry. One, when you say waste of time, what you really mean is that the only thing you should be looking for, the only thing college should do is prepare you for a job. That's the only purpose of college. Yes. Okay, that's not true. <sighs> How are you going to say, yeah, obviously the answer, even if you don't know anything, the answer to that is no. Even if you don't know, like the only thing college is capable of doing or should do is prepare you for a job. Obviously, that's not true. Obviously, that's not true. Right. There are important like fields of education that we would want people to do more research. And it's important to have people such that, as? Um, such as, I don't know, having like historians, having writers. Um, a lot of women get jobs in education. Teachers are arguably some of the most important people historians, in society. Historians, the vast majority of the history that they teach every single decade, we find out it's a lot of. By the way, he's railing against historians. Funny enough, he's going to cite to a historian later to back up on He's going to cite a historian later to back up one of his. <laughs> I can't. The shit is, is freaking lies. Are you serious right now? What do you mean? Historians? What do you mean by find out the lies? Like by from other YouTubers or what do you mean? No, by, by other freaking, by other people who go and do the research. It's historians, like, oh, well, we right? Find out, we find out this not, no, not formally trained historians. Not formally trained. Can you give me, okay, I never do this in debate, and if you don't have the ability to do this, you don't have one off the top of your head, that's totally fine. I'm not trying to push you on like gotchas or anything. But like, what's like, can you give me like an example of like, this is something that historians thought was one way, and then like an amateur investigator completely overruled and, and figured out that all the historians were wrong. Okay, well, let's start with, let's start with say ancient Egypt. There were a bunch of historians that made a bunch of claims about the Egyptians, and a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ben Yakinen actually went to Egypt and actually found out that a lot of the things they were saying were not true. That's one example. What what is this in relation? What would like what was like a claim? Of <laughs> How you thought that vague nonsense was gonna slide? <laughs> <laughs> How you thought that vague? How you, how, you, <laughs> how you thought that vague foolishness was gonna slide? <clears throat> it's also okay to say I can't think of one right now. By the way, but like we were kings, it's not gonna slide in the debate. <laughs> like we were kings, it's not gonna slide. <laughs> Before your history books, we were kings. Not going to slide in a debate. <clears throat> My mom walked by 
when angry man was talking and said, that's cause that's what they are worthless. I said, who, what me? She said, no, that's mean. Your mom is being mean. It wasn't true. Wait, hold on. Is this like, this isn't like the Yakubian shit. Is, is this something start, different? Or? We're going we're gonna to start. Let's, let's not go off into that. The, the, the main. No, let's. No, 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 no. Let's not go off into that. No, let's. Let's go off into it. I want to learn. Please tell me what. You said ancient Egypt and something wasn't real and something was real. Please explain to me what you mean. No, 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 no. <laughs> let's not go off into that. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Let's do it. Let's do it. Tell me. <laughs> King Tosh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm done. I'm done. Point that I'm trying to make is that, yes, okay, you have people who go to college, they want to become artists. I, I went to school for art, right? You have people who go to college and become artists. You have people. Oh, 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 you went to school for art. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that STEM? <laughs> I don't think it's STEM, but please correct me. Maybe it is, there's an art STEM degree. <laughs> so you're dragging women. This is how dumb this is. This is how dumb, this is how weird and dumb this is. You went to school for art, right? And you're out here dragging women for going to school for gender studies degree. Like, I, I'm, I'm confused. You're saying the only reason to go to school is to prepare for a job, and the only degree you should be getting is in the STEM field. Now you're sitting here telling us that you went to school to study art? Now, I graduated from the College of Arts and Sciences, so I, I feel you, but I'm not making the argument that the only thing you should be doing in school is to go there for STEM. That's not what I am. <laughs> Ooh. people to go to college become historians and all of that's cool but the point that i'm trying to make is when we're talking about the importance of our society and the structure i'm talking about the bare bone structure of it functioning we need we need engineer we need engineer we need architects we need all of that sure i'm with you stand firm behind the men who build um that art degree though <laughs> You, sir, are not the man who was building with that art degree that we both share. You, what do you mean? What do you mean? We're going to school for anything other than STEM is useless because women don't use those degrees to build the beer bones of society. Also, I went to school for art. You went to school for what now? So, no, absolutely not. You you don't have the right. You and I don't have the right. Like, that would be like me coming up here talking about if you are not a mathematician, if you didn't go to school for STEM, you are worthless. Sir, I didn't go to school for STEM either. So, like, what do you mean? I There was no... Girl, period. Years. We need scientists. We need people in the STEM field. So if we're talking about the importance of women, if we're talking from your perspective that women are outpacing men, I'm going to be looking at that field. I'm not going to be looking at at. All right, women aren't outpacing men. They're outpacing you. <laughs> you are being outpaced. Because like, what do you mean? How are you going to sit there? Ooh, so frustrating. This is actually frustrating. How are you going to sit up here and diminish the degree saying women are useless, women are getting these weird degrees, they're not going into STEM, um, like us men. Us men, we create society. We build society. Okay, so what did you build? Oh, wait. Art? A period. A period. <laughs> Nothing is confused because he doesn't understand pookiness or does he? <laughs> the art school STEM major should have translated for... Look, I wish he had called him out on that. I wish he had called him out, and that would not be ad hominem attacks. That it wouldn't have been. It's calling into question what it is that you say you believe. That is not ad hominem. You, sir, are an art major. What are you talking about, STEM? I, maybe he has a degree in basket weaving since it is an art. <laughs> you know what? This is where it should have ended. 
They should have gotten dragged for this. Someone said Cleopatra. To... <laughs> Wait. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. We need to get through this. My bad. And art and, and history and stuff like that. I don't, but I don't want a society that just has the bare bones. That sounds miserable. We need things like art. This is where we and spend totally, like 95% of our time. And I totally agree with that. I'm, I'm an artist. I totally agree with that. But the problem is your premise is that women are outpacing men. In order for women to outpace men, they would have to be outperforming them in the bare bones of our society. The, the no, you don't get to define what area means that you're outpacing. In the arts, are women outpacing men? If yes, here is why. If no, here is why. In STEM, are women outpacing men? If yes, here is why. If no, here is why. Generally, when we talk about upwards mobility, are there objective criteria for how we can measure this? If yes, are women outpacing men based on these criteria developed? If yes, here is why. If no, here is why. What are you talking about? If women aren't out there digging trenches, then... <laughs> so you're not out there digging trenches? You an art major? All right, girl, period. Things that make the structure run. That's the point that I was making yesterday. Okay, I don't even know if we disagree. This might just be a semantics thing. Earlier, it sounded like you agreed with me that society has structured itself around accelerating women, and it seems to be doing a good job at that, and a lot of men are being left behind. Do you agree with that, or do you disagree with that? It is accelerating women, but in a very, uh, in a disproportionate way and in a very sneaky, underhanded way. It's not like, okay, let's, let's try this, right? Let's try this. Because I think your perception of red pill or the manosphere is that just everybody over here just hates women, blah, blah, blah. I don't have an issue with women competing if they're actually competing. In other words, if the playing field is level, but what we have going on today is not a level playing field. We have a rigged game. We, on the one hand, we have... We have people saying, okay, well, women are equal to men. Women are fully capable of doing what men do. You even said a second ago that women, you kind of implied that women were smarter than men. I did. So well, let me be real quick. I just, what I said was they might, their biology might be better suited to classrooms than men. It's, it's, it's better suited to following. That's I don't know if I, no, I, following is a, that's, that's a stupid letter term. Let's say. Women. I feel like y'all should seek therapy. I think y'all should seek therapy. How how could you not under why why would you attack there? They're better. He corrected he corrected you and said, No, I'm not saying women are smarter. I'm just saying they might be better suited for this specific type of learning, right? Not that they are smarter, that they might be better suited for this. Oh no, they are they 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 they're suited for following. Gosh. Stop! Like ew! Like it, it's not even like <clears throat> it's not even like it's an argument that he can validate really because Destiny is about to explain that most people, men and women, are followers, right? Rightfully so. But the idea that because you are man, your biology means that you're a leader is kind of ridiculous. Like not even kind of. It's it it it's leave that alone. That is weird. That is a weird statement to make because now you have to define what a leader is. And now you have to make male biology synonymous <laughs> with leadership. And I would love for you to do that. I would love for you to do that. Tell what is a leader and how do you know that's a leader? Uh, tell, tell me. I might even agree with you that this is what leadership is. Let's be, let's, hold on, wait, wait, let's be, no, no, wait, let's, so you're, getting, you're getting sensitive over terminology. No, 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 I'm not getting sensitive over terminology, just let me clear their terms, okay? Here's, a, here's fact number one, most men are followers, most men are not leaders, okay? So most people in general are followers. When I say that women are better suited towards learning, it seems to be the case that men, that male bodies, are just more in general suited towards activity. They want to be outside, they want to be doing things, they want to be building things, that's why all of our little boys are getting diagnosed with ADHD, because sitting inside of a classroom all day with your head staring at a textbook and doing notes is agonizing to a lot of young men. That's just something that we're not okay. built for. Well, well. Whereas women don't mind. They might. They, they are better at like being calm and being chill and being more cerebral, taking notes, studying and doing that. That just seems to be a thing that their biology seems to be better suited for. I'm not saying one is a follower and one is a leader or one is smarter or one is dumber. I'm just saying in the ways that we are, women seem better suited to classroom first, environments. First That's what I'm saying. First of all, how do you not say, oh, okay, let's move on. It feels like your world is just black and white and it, it's almost like he goes through extremes as opposed to just accepting like a very basic 
sort of, it's, I'm going to use the word nuance, but it's like a really basic nuance. It's like, I am not saying women are better than you, sir. Please don't feel inferior. I'm saying the ways in which we structure this one specific thing might be leaning towards the woman's biology as opposed to the man. And maybe other things would lean more towards men and away from women. Maybe there are differences that need to be accommodated in order to maximize both both people's potential. It's not it's not even an argument. It's just a, like a statement of like a, a potential fact, right? Like it, it's not even a fact in and of itself. It's just like I can understand where you're going. We don't need to be arguing at this level, like at all. We there shouldn't be an. I'm tired, sweetie. If you can't follow, you can't lead. I actually agree with this fundamentally. I believe this so fundamentally. I also don't, I think leaders are servants and you're not about to change my mind on that either. Women are better suited to follow, but ain't no woman following him. So he's quite about it. <laughs> women are out here fighting their biology, apparently, because y'all are suited to follow and still not following them. <laughs> How sucky of a leader. How sucky of a leader must you be if your biology, if your biological makeup as a man is that you are predisposed to leadership and the biology of a woman is that they are followers and still they don't follow you and they still don't follow you. Like, so everyone just fighting their biology and you just losing. Got it. We, we can't look. I'm not a leftist, so I'm not ultra sensitive when it comes to terminology. Okay. There, there are there are structures in our society that are very important that have leaders and have followers. OK, now I will agree that the boys do not like sitting in a classroom all day. It's frustrating to them. But men are naturally more rebellious than women are. And the reason why is because men are not natural followers. Even if you have structures where men are following. Why do you think in the military they have to have a boot camp? Because those men have to be basically conditioned to follow properly because they are naturally rebellious. There's a. Because you don't know how to follow. <laughs> because you don't know how to follow instruction does not make you. <laughs> this, is, this is actually funny. When you look at it from, if you take race out of this, which I know is hard to do, because once you put race in it, it, it just... I'm not going to say what Sin said. It highlighted. Please don't say it, Sin. I know you're here. Don't say it. But you said something because there was a stereotype about Black people that kept getting perpetuated. And I know for a fact it is not true. I have met too many smart Black people. So it, it's just like really weird to watch this interaction and this man, angry man, I don't know him, by the way, to watch him not be able to like really thoughtfully go through his own ideas. And it's not even like Destiny, I, I don't think Destiny is challenging him. Like people are like, oh my God, Destiny is debating. This is not a debate. It's just like random questions throwing him off because none of his ideas feel like they've been thought through in any like meaningful way. The reason why when women are in, girls are in school, they, they do better in school. Because the way that structure is, they're given instructions. And they're, and they're look, they, we understand what the school system is. The school system was designed around the Prussian school system, which basically was created for the purpose of creating factory workers, created for the purpose of creating uh, a better... Why are you saying that like it's a bad thing? Didn't you, two minutes ago, say the only purpose for school is to prepare people for a job? So now that we know that schools, in the way that they're designed, is to create factory workers, in your mind, it's doing its job. It's doing the job you said it was created to do. You said the purpose of school is to prepare someone for work. So the school system, from your perspective, is working beautifully soldiers okay people that are going to follow suit that's exactly what the educational system is here in america all right so it's not an insult to say that women are followers that's not an insult it's just the reality men are not as prone to follow as women are i'm just saying that the 
most people are followers. We, we have to agree on that. Like, work only works if you have one manager and many employees. The army only works if you've got one general and many soldiers. The, the a country only works if you've got one president and many constituents. Most people are followers. Society only works. That's why there's that's a whole phrase, too many uh, chiefs and not enough Indians. You have to have followers in society, right? So, that's true. And then even when, that, we look at, and even, when we look at, even when we look at classrooms, where we're saying like, oh, like women are better to, uh, to following, and that's why they do better in classrooms. Who's teaching? Who's leading the classrooms? It's women. It's like 95% of teachers are women. Um, but like, now... No, yeah. now, but but here's the thing. You just said something that gave validity to my point. Where do you think the term there's too many uh, uh, chiefs and not enough Indians comes from? The reason you have that term is because every time you have a group of men following another man, there's always a subset of men that's trying to overthrow that man. So, no, they're not naturally followers. They Men, men will follow until they're in a position to take over. The reason why most men follow is not because they're just like, well, I'm going to you know, go with the flow. They follow because they don't have the power to take over who's ever in the position above them. That's the reason why men do that. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where from here. I, like, I had a lot of experience managing a lot of people. No, 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 no. Why are you debating that? Ask him how he knows that. Ask him. What, how do you know this? How do you know this? across a diverse amount of whether it's video games whether it's business whether it's organizing podcasts whether it's just watching people in society like most people gravitate towards following most men don't want the responsibility of being in charge of other people most men don't want the responsibility of um taking on the negatives of an outcome no 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 <clears throat> what is a leader ask what if you cannot sit there and say most men want to be leaders while you're blaming women for everything happening in the <laughs> of a decision that involves other people. That's just, being in a leadership role is really no, difficult. No, but they want the glory. Yeah, but that's not but being they, a leader. That doesn't want count. The, Everybody wants it. That's and that's why you should have asked him what is a leader. Wanting the glory is not you wanting to be a leader. That's you wanting the glory. <clears throat> you can also want to be seen as the leader. It doesn't mean you want to be the leader. Wanting the end product and wanting to go through the process to get to the end product are two very different things. I promise you, a lot of people would prefer to be a, a, a graduate of a top law school than actually go through the process of being the person who could go and graduate from a top law school. Wanting the end thing does not make you the person who gets to the end thing. Wanting the accolades does not make you the athlete. Wanting the gold medal does not make you an Olympian. Him do Olympic athletes. I don't like the Olympian statement. So you don't want the responsibility. You don't want to take accountability. You don't want to do the hard work that it takes to build up a community or a family, i.e. you're just running off, right? That's the example. Just leave it alone. So you are not a leader. And not only are you not the leader when you blame everyone else, you don't want to be the leader because you don't want to take on that responsibility. You want the praise of being a leader, but you don't want the responsibility of being a leader. So you, you don't want to be a leader. You just want to look like a leader. You want the position, but you don't actually want to be the thing. Like those are two very different things. Like, I would love to be a guitarist. I am not. I, I would love to be able to play, but I'm not going to develop callus on my fingers to, <laughs> to learn it. <laughs> so I don't want to learn it. I just want to be good. At, just want to be good. <laughs> if men are naturally leaders, he as a man can't blame women. The fault lies with hit men. Leaders take responsibility for all positive and not. Yeah. <clears throat> To, but no, that's where that comes from. In, in order for you to get the accolades, the glory, to, to get the ego boost, you you every every dude, even if they admit it or not, has had a desire to be that guy, to be the head guy. Sure, that's okay. everybody that's can have a desire. That's fine. If you want to if you want to say something like men have a desire to be leaders, that's fine. I would agree with you there. But men are not naturally leaders. Leadership is is okay, a, is a so skill that's trying, crafted over time. Most people so are not suited for it. And just wanting the glory of being a leader does not make you somebody that oh, is so a leader. You're talking about you're, you're, okay. So we're we're getting into it. look. Here's the thing. I'm not saying that every man that spawns is is has the ability to be freaking Julius Caesar. That's not what I'm saying. That's not even what I'm saying, but all right. Well, you're saying that, you know, I'm assuming that you're saying that men 
naturally have the ability to be great leaders, what, right? All I'm saying is, broadly speaking, men and women have way more in common than they do separately from each other. And when people I try totally to agree with that, I'm uh, sure you do. When, when, when people try to draw these hardcore separations out of like, men are leaders, women are followers, like these broad generalizations, they end up missing like most of the story and they send people down really mindfucked paths that don't accurately describe the, the world. And then it leaves them ill-suited to succeed in the world. That's my problem. Well, I mean, look, in a perfect world, that might actually be a reality, but we don't live in a perfect world. And I, I, I refuse to believe that we can circumvent hundreds of thousands of years of bioevolution with what less than a hundred years of a certain ideology like really so so the past so every all the entire civilization has gotten it wrong up until 50 years ago now all of a sudden you know the the new age way of thinking is the way we're supposed to do things I don't know, so when you, you say like god <clears throat> so i've gotten to this thing i stopped doing it now where when people say things that don't make sense i'll just stop I, <laughs> I won't respond. I'll just let them keep going. Like, I'm not. <laughs> All right, keep talking, girl. And then when you're done, I'm just going to move on because I'm not about to. I'm not engaging with that. Like, I'm not. Like, what? Like, I feel like that's a waste. Like, that's such a waste of space. Like, I am not engaging with that. I am above that. I am actually better than that. I'm not. I'm not engaging with that. Like, no. Like you don't, you can't lower yourself that much. Like I'm not engaging with it. You go through the process and you deserve the glory. And it's embarrassing that they shame women who go through the process to endeavor to have more. Shaking my head. Yeah. And I think it, it's like, so there is sympathy for me. Um, and I don't ask anyone to give this sympathy. I don't think a lot of people understand where their anger comes from and where their resentment comes from and um, jealousy comes from. And I think if they sit long enough with someone to explain it to them, right? Or that person doesn't have to explain. If you ask, I think, I think if you ask the right question, you can start to unravel the person. Like, not even the, 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 the ideas, the person, right? And they get to face themselves in the mirror. And what tends to happen, and this is why it's a useless strategy for a lot of people, what tends to happen is when you hold that mirror up to them and they realize that this is jealousy, that they don't actually have an argument, that this is weak and you're we a nothing, <laughs> you're a wannabe in, in that sense. Pride doesn't allow for the kind of growth that needs to take place. And that's why it's a waste of time. A lot of people will double down, will start deluding themselves a lot more. Cognitive dissonance kicks in and you have people going years and years and years thinking that majority is not a part. <laughs> I'm sorry, Orange Bill. I saw your comment. I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> I... <laughs> ah! Interestingly, if men are still leaders in society, like he says, but mostly white men, the advancement of women is sanctioned by other men. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Find it wrong. I mean, like, if you want to talk about, like, like, do you believe, like, in the nuclear family? Yes. Like, that's a really new concept. Hundreds of thousands of years of bioevolution is us living like together as like groups of people like hunting for berries and like chasing animals down. Like that's what hundreds of thousands of years of bioevolution got us. But that's what built up to it. That's what built up to it. Okay, well then fine. Then I could just use your same argument and say, well, that's building up to this then. That's a good point. But the problem with that is you can't really come from that position because the way we are starting to do things now is <clears throat> I know this. This is mush mouthery. And I don't mean it disrespectfully. Well, whatever. Take it how you want. When I'm in the barber shop and people start meandering this way, they don't know what they're talking about. Every time I'm in a barber shop and they're like, "Yeah, that's a good point." God, what are you talking about? Because now you're just like meandering and you're 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 annoying me. You're annoying me. I also don't like <laughs> my barber keeps bringing a bunch of men in the shop to like talk to me, and this is what it keeps. This is what keeps happening. Where I will say something. I'm actually going there tomorrow. 
I will say something and I'll explain it very well. And they're like, that's a good point. And then they just start like not saying anything but talking. Like, how are you talking but not saying anything at all? Like the words don't actually form sentences. And like you're talking and then I now have to interrupt you and pretend like we're in a conversation. Like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to decide not to interrupt like I used to do and just like not explain, like not try to piece together random thoughts to make a coherent sentence. That's what I'm going to not do. Totally the freaking opposite. And are we getting the results that we got with the previous things? Well, are, I mean, we getting the, are, we, are we getting the results we got with the pre? L let me go back. Let me show you that nothing was said. <laughs> let me show you. Y'all need to realize that literally nothing was said here. Like nothing was said. Look up to it. That's what built up to it. Okay, well then fine. Then I could just use your same argument and say, well, that's building up to this then. That's a good point. But the problem with that is you can't really come from that position because the way we are starting to do things now is totally the freaking opposite. And are we getting the results that we got with the previous things? What? What? Like, actually, like, like what? What did you just say? What, what did you just say? That result from that other thing. <laughs> it is the opposite of the past. And did we get the result from... And if you ask them to explain himself now, everyone is going to say... Everyone is going to say you're being mean. If my men could value their, their, you understand subordinate masculinity and hegemonic masculinity, so they'd learn why they're actually upset. <clears throat> Girl, someone came up here talking about the hegemony, and we were talking, um, and they got so mad because they didn't. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. So you are leading because you don't qualify. And that's not period. Like, I don't know what... To, LOL, I'm so excited to know every now and then we will remind Orange Bill of this year-long beef that we had over fractions and vocabulary words. I, I won't do it again. I won't do it again because when someone has admit defeat, you don't kick them while they're down. I would have continued to go if he had not said, okay, whatever. But, like, I don't think it's fair to, like... I think ego is a... a is just something else and i don't i don't think it's weird so i'm gonna stop <laughs> it's so easy to but i'm gonna stop <clears throat> now it is everybody want to talk like they got something to say but nothing comes out when they move their lips just a bunch of gibberish eminem period are we getting are we getting good results now because it's like what as far as as far as the interaction between men and women the way i see it when i look around at the interaction between men and women there's something terribly wrong going on right now well, and with for one, for yeah. one, they've done studies. They've done studies that have proven not only women, but people in general are the most unhappy that they've ever been in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. Specifically women. They've done numerous studies on this. So you just go ignore the crisis. You just go ignore the, <laughs> the crisis of lonely men and who is actually unali unaliving themselves. You just go, you just go make up your own stat. <laughs> you just you just, just go make up your own stat. Women are unhappy, but they're still choosing to go their own way and decide what they want to do. And you are uh, wait, is this out of the goodness of his heart? I didn't realize this is out of the, this person. What's his name? Angry man is doing this out of the goodness of his heart. He's trying to help women. Because he sees that women are sad, so he's trying to... Girl, no one believes that foolishness. Stop it. Men, we are in the lonely generation of men. Like that's a, that's a, <laughs> What do you mean? I don't believe that you are out here trying to help women. I don't believe you. I don't believe that you looked into the research and you looked into the world and you came to the conclusion that women are the most unhappy they've ever been. And you've decided, I'm going to start a podcast 
to help women. I don't believe that's what you're doing. I don't believe this is for women. I don't. I don't. I do not. So if, if this new age way of, of us doing things, this new progressive way, you know, because I'm a, if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of guy. If this new age way of doing things is so freaking awesome, then why is everybody so miserable? Why do the men have such a high depression rate, a high deletion rate? Why are the women going to bed with a glass of wine? Why is everybody... All right, there you go, there you go. Why are the men unaliving themselves? Why are they depressed? Why are women going to bed with a glass of wine? All right. I feel like if you put that on a scale, <laughs> there's nothing funny about this. I'm laughing because I just realized that like moments after he said, this hurts women and women are going through a lot of pain. He then goes to explain how men are actually the ones suffering. <laughs> women are going to bed with a glass of wine. Men are not going to bed. Men are going to bed depressed. I think the focus should be on men. I, I I think men should come together with other men and figure their stuff out. I think I think even you know that. When you say men are depressed and they are unaliving themselves, we have a problem that we need to fix. And we don't fix that by telling women to diminish themselves so you can feel good about who you are. Nope. Mm, no. If you're leaders, elevate and lead. He's so unhappy. When we have more, we have the most, we, we live better today than we've ever lived in the history of the world as far as, you know, our homes, as far as our, our uh, the food that we can get and, and everything else. Our quality of life is way better than it was in the 1920s or the 1950s, but we're the most unhappy. What's the reason for that? Okay. I think these are all really good questions, but I just want you to think of like what you're saying. People are unhappy. We live better than we've ever lived before, but we're still miserable. Why is everybody so miserable? Our quality of life is better, but we're so miserable. Why are we so unhappy? We are the most unhappy we've ever been, okay? Mm -hmm. Framing on all of this is that it seems like all of us have problems right now. It's not just a man versus woman thing. It's not I was going to use the rat experiment. I was going to do mice because Katrina so eloquently corrected me to not say rat, but say mice. Universe. But it doesn't matter. Um, I wrote because her and I had an argument about it and it would be wrong for me to use it now. But Katrina, please note I would use, would have used it right here, but I'm deciding not to. When you have everything in the world, then the comfort goes up and now you're just a mess. But I'm not going to use it, so unfortunately I can't really go into that analogy. It's not just something happening on the male side or the female side. It seems like there is something that is pushing people in a miserable direction. Now, I have my thoughts and ideas on that. I think a lot of it has to do with the internet and especially cell phones. I think the way that we engage with all of that stuff is destroying our minds. We're putting screens in front of people at like three years old and like ADHD in the head of them before they even step foot inside of a classroom. I think that we are like watching more content, like scrolling our phones constantly. That's like destroying our brain's ability to get like happiness and enjoyment out of like normal things in life. I think that we have a really hard time seeing people in real life because we're replacing all of our real life connections with online Discord group chats and everything. I think that these are all like really good things to talk about and understand. But when all of this gets shoehorned, into like, well, the reason why we're so miserable is because we've stepped away from like a uh, traditional like boy girl relationships or whatever. I just I feel like now instead of talking about all of that other stuff that I think is having a negative impact on all of us, we get hyper fixated on some really silly man versus woman gender dynamic when there are issues that are facing every single person in society today that's making all of us fucking miserable. That's my issue, I guess. Well, I don't disagree with any of that, but I'll add one caveat. It's not that it's not that it's just about the gender roles, but that is part of it. That's part of it. We, we can we can look I can sit here all day and we can talk about the, the the negative impact of social media, the negative impact of putting a freaking screen in a in a two year old's face, the negative impact of, of every new age thing that we have that has given us information overload. We can talk about that all day, but we can't ignore the fact that when you start playing with the gender roles in any society and, and this has been studied over and over, this is not the first time we've had a society or a civilization. Name one of those studies, <clears throat> name one of those studies. Because I'm telling you that when women, the, the, the few women who could actually be at home were at home, they were going through a bunch of stress. And the men who went out to work were also going through a bunch of stress. Now they're sharing the stress. It's always been that way. It is what it is. I don't know what you're talking about, but I can't wait for you to get to the Black community because you are not about to stay out there generally for long. He's going to bring it to the black community. Angry man telling black women how to get to the manga juice, period. 
off the lips of the king, the kings. <laughs> Period. And speaking as someone who was mad for 10 years, I'll take my glass of wine, sir. If I wasn't allergic to the preservatives in wine, by the way, at the beginning of my channel, I used to drink a bunch of wine. I'm allergic to the preservatives in wine. Didn't know that. Just always having random stuff on me after I drink wine, and I was very confused about it. So, yeah, I can't drink wine. I do drink champagne where we began to play with the gender roles and it wreaked havoc it caused problems with us because that is something that is that is part of us regardless in fact you even did it yesterday you even did it yesterday when we were having that discussion you know that was heightened discussion but towards the end of that discussion you said well who's gonna watch the kid if he's out working and you said a woman now why would you say a woman unless you still have gender roles burned into your brain Okay, I'm not here to say that all gender roles should be uh, abolished, right? So in the beginning part of this conversation, I made the argument that there are differences between men and women that leave them suited towards other things, right? That's why I said that women seem to be excelling in classroom environments. Um, and yesterday you asked me the question of every man were to uh, disappear from the planet, things would fall apart. If every woman were to disappear from the planet, things would carry on as normal, which isn't true. But like, well, no, I didn't. Let, let, or maybe not carry on as normal. <laughs> Girl, I have a, I bought a mini bar. And I'm a mixologist at this point. Whenever y'all actually come over to my place, I will. I am. I am learning to make the best amaretto sour ever. I'm going. I will be hooking y'all up. People don't like amaretto because it's sweet. It is. It's a, the Italian liqueur. People don't generally like. I love them. It's dark liquor, so I'm here for it. But. I will make y'all drinks. I'm getting into my I'm getting into my mixologist bag. Normal, but society would still function or something, right? Let me correct that. No, okay, what I said it. was what I said, and it, look, this is what I said. I said if women took a day off, not if they disappeared. I don't want to live in a world with no women. So let's just go ahead and get that clear. If they took a day off from their jobs, and the reason why I say that is because women tend to stay away from a lot of the heavy lifting jobs. A lot of the jobs that are, I mean, sure, you you you'll find a woman that's an airline pilot. You'll find a woman that wants to do construction, but that is few and far between. If, if, if the men decided one day to just take a day off, the guys that work at nuclear power plants, the guys that fly planes, the, the, the guys that pick up our trash, the guys that do all of the things that make our world run, it would cause a serious problem. That's what I said. Sure. So what we're saying is like men do backbone of society jobs and women do complementary work, basically, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, more or less. Yeah. But I think the important thing to recognize about that is the backbone jobs don't work without that complementary work. That's kind of what I'm saying, right? Like, let's say that a man, and this is why I used the family example yesterday, but it doesn't have to be a family example, it could be anything. But if men are off doing this backbone work, then you need somebody to take care of families. The only way that a man can go and do that work is if somebody can empower him to do it by staying home and taking care of, say, children, right? That's why I use that example. That even if men are doing the backbone work, they can only do it because of the complementary job that exists where women are allowing it to happen, essentially. It's like having a supervisor for a restaurant. The supervisor isn't cooking and, and busting tables in the front, but like the employees wouldn't be able to manage themselves without somebody kind of like working things in the back. I don't mean to say that like women lead men. I'm just saying that the roles complement each other. Well, here's the thing about that, which I didn't get to say yesterday. Number one, I'm not, my position is not that men can be totally independent of women. That's not my position. Human beings are interdependent. We, we're all dependent upon each other. However, when you start looking at the dynamic of men. Hey, Tiffy, I missed you. I missed you. I haven't seen you on the Discord and that made me sad, but I hope all is well. I hope all is well. And how men operate, it is extreme. This is our two year anniversary. We're hugging and we're doing a smooth dance. We're waltzing together for two years. You've been with me for two years. <laughs> you, you, we've been together for two years. Tell your husband I said hello. <clears throat> Shonda, welcome to the membership. Extremely plausible that a man can go out here in the world, be successful, without the support of a woman. Now, if you look at it as a whole, then yeah, you might be able to make a few points where it's like, oh, well, women do this job or that job and, and that job might be beneficial or whatever to what the men are doing. But the job, a lot of those complimentary jobs that women are doing, men could do. Um, okay, I don't women mean. just recently, women just, re you, you said something about the the uh, the nuclear family recently, right? Just recently, a new, a new thing, which it is a new thing, right? I would argue that it probably, well, I'm not gonna go into that. That being a new thing. Another new thing is women being in the workforce. That's fairly new. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. That's one of the ways that I think when I talk about women evolving, I think that's one of the things that's happened. Okay. So guess what? Up to that point, we still had a functioning society. Up to that point, with the world still spun. Up to that point, we were still able to constantly improve. We were still able to get awesome inventions that have improved the human yeah, condition. Yeah, but post-women entering the workforce, our world is better now in a lot of ways than it was 80 years ago. Yeah. 
our world is better now because it's naturally progressing. But how many how many impactful inventions have we had since since we moved into this age of let's promote women? How many inventions have we had that have been as impactful as the cotton gin, the printing press, the steam engine? I mean, like the microprocessor and the cell phone, the cell phone, and the Internet are probably two of the biggest inventions in human history. I would you just say. got through saying that the cell phone is what's causing the biggest problems. It's making us unhappy. Sure. Things can be used in bad ways. I mean, gunpowder was an amazing invention, too, but it's mainly used to kill people. Are you asking me what the amazing inventions are? You're asking to make everybody feel better. Right. Cell phones and computer. <clears throat> he should have been dragged for that more because you literally just pointed out that we are the most comfortable we've ever been. Our standard of living is through the roof in terms of comparison to past generations. He just said that. You, Destiny, and Angry Men agreed on that. Now he is like, oh, what have we done since? God, if you don't go sit somewhere, like this, this don't make no sense. I understand the push if you're in a debate to diminish what the other side does. And I, I get it, but it's like, I'm trying to figure out how do I make this watchable in a way where we are not drained? after we're done I'm trying to figure that out because I, I i don't want to be drained <clears throat> i'm actually trying to hit the streets <laughs> i'm trying to, I'm, trying, I'm not going to hit the streets because i need a shape up so i'm probably not going to leave anyway we we have all night it's fine heat seeking missiles seeing i and gps took black men out of the home we have all night. Thank you, Afro Butterfly. Like, yeah, no, 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 no. Your architecture and the internet are like the biggest things that have accelerated everything in the world, like probably more than any other invention in human history, more than the-, the... Nobody's, And nobody's, nobody's disagreeing with that. Well, sure, but, but you asked me, like, were there any big inventions since the cotton gin or whatever, now that we've had women in the no, workplace? What I said, no, no, no. What I said was, what are the inventions that we've had now that have been as impactful? Sure, and I would argue that, like, thing. cell phones and the internet have been some of the most impactful things ever in all of they've made an, They've made an impact, but I wouldn't say the most impactful. Sorry, I'm not going to do this, but I, I, I love responding to the comments. I probably should drop the link and just have people come up randomly, but bring back a feast. I agree. I actually agree. Like, I, I, I agree. Hafiz, where are you? You have changed, I think, Hafiz, and your voice is apparently necessary. The men's need a leader, and you, you need to come back and lead these men's. There's no way that that is, is as impactful. Because you look, if you look at the reason why I say Wait, where, do you, where are you from? Where do you live? Where do I live? Yeah. I live in North Carolina. Okay, I'm in Miami. I'm talking to you in real time. Both of us can see each other's videos. And there's like 10 or 20,000 people. And there's going to be hundreds of thousands more that watch on a YouTube channel later on. That type and of reach. Awesome. Yeah, but I'm that not, type of reach of communication, dude, the printing press. Not, like, never, it's, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not discounting that. That's that's awesome. But that but look, here's the thing. When you have the printing press, right? Yeah. Okay, so you got the printing press. Cool. Now we can have books that are printed identically. We don't have to worry about people tampering with books, tampering with their information, right? However, the same way that somebody could use the printing press negatively, right? Mm -hmm. I would argue that, yes, the way we can communicate is awesome. We can reach a lot of people. But guess what? Any idiot can get up here and fire up a freaking live stream and just give the whole world a bunch of misinformation. <laughs> he did not just. He did just say that. The jokes write themselves at this point. He did. A period. Self awareness. Self awareness is a beautiful thing. <clears throat> um, since he keeps talking about traditionalism, he should know that women maintain the home and raise kids always meant they had to have education. So. I don't know why these people hate education so much. I really don't. <clears throat> Thank you, by the way. Curry Up and Eat says, women are helping them to provide for the family and while doing her job, and somehow the men are still unhappy. What more do they want from us <laughs> to submit while doing it? To be a submissive provider. Oh, oh. Thank you all. There's a thousand people in here. Period. Period. Thank you. He doesn't know the process of the internet. <laughs> that was a self-drag. Ain't nobody got to do anything else to that. Anger, epidemic of pathological, fragile ego. And projection. 
not just pathological fragile ego but projection because what he just described about people being able to come on the internet whoo the accuracy right or wrong and then people sit there and watch because like you said earlier you got two-year-olds that's got a screen in front of their face right mm-hmm. but a two-year-old if you, if you wrote if you wrote, <laughs> who's going to tell him not me not me i'm not going to tell him he don't need to know wrote a book that was an extremely negative book um like I'm not going to say that guy's name, but if, if you if you wrote a book that was extremely negative, you don't have to worry about it. you can put it in front of a two year old. He's not going to be able to read it like that or even comprehend it. But if somebody's sitting up there on YouTube saying something crazy and your kid, you know, parents are not paying attention and the kid is watching it, that's an extremely negative impact. So the reason why when I'm saying impactful, I mean, impactful in a way that is more beneficial to, to human society than, than negative. That's what I'm saying. Do you think that do you think that the Internet or cell phones have been more negative than positive? It's part of the reason we're having so many difficulties right now. Sure, I mean, it might be part of it, but I mean, like, the, the more impactful and powerful the invention, the more good and the more bad it can do, right? Like nuclear, yeah, like nuclear research, you know, gives us amazing reactors that can produce a lot of energy relatively cleanly, and it also gives us atomic weapons that could maybe end the entire world, right? And I, and I feel like cell phones and the internet are similar. Um, I'm 34, you seem like an older guy, maybe, or like around my age, or maybe a little older, but like, I remember growing up, like, if you asked me a question about anything, you would pull out the fucking Encyclopedia Britannica to like, look up an answer. And now you have, like, the, the world's information is at your fingertips. That's an unbelievably yeah, think, crazy advance we, in technology, right? Like, that's the... But don't you think, don't you think that I actually like reading my Encyclopedia Britannica. Don't you don't you think that's a little more organic? Don't you think that don't you think that it's more valuable when you actually have to search for the knowledge as opposed to someone just Googling it and not knowing for sure if it's accurate? Uh, maybe it could be. Or there might be a lot of people that just don't do the search at all because they don't have they either don't have the books because if you had one of those sets of Encyclopedia Britannicas, you're paying like a lot of money for a good set of them. Um, and then a lot of people just end up not knowing. Um, I'm trying, so I'll give you that. not to like go too deep into this, but just circling back, like, uh, cause you asked me what are like really impactful things. There've been really impactful things. We landed on the moon, we've got nuclear weapons, we've got the internet. I agree that these things can be good or bad. I'm just saying that they're impactful. It's like when time chooses a person of the year, you know, like sometimes it's a really bad person, sometimes it's a good person, it's people that are impactful. Um, when, when I look at like the, the big differences that women have right now compared to like 30 years ago, um, or maybe 60, 70 years ago, the two big things that have changed for women are like college and work and then reproduction. I think those mm-hmm. are like the two huge, those are like 95% of what is, what <laughs> Children inherit intelligence from their mother, the X chromosome. Ladies, pay attention and choose wisely. Love you, theme is 2023. Now you dragging the mandolin and saying love you. <laughs> Fury, I love you too. What has changed women? And then like 5% could be like Instagram, social media, Kim Kardashian, whatever. But I think those two things have been huge because it's a lot of women to put off having children by using birth control or whatever. And it's a lot of women to live independently from men. They don't have to marry somebody to find a job. Um, and when I look at these two things, I don't think these things are going away. We're not getting rid of birth control and we're not yeah. removing women from work or from uh, school. So then, I, so given that, and I regularly say this all the time, right? We can't think of an idealized world. We've got to look at the world we live in. If that's the world we live in, then I don't think it's enough to tell men that you should just be a top one percenter and then you're going to get a woman, right? You have to find a way to adapt to the world we're in where women have changed significantly in the past 30, 40 years. So that's why I talk from that frame of reference. Women are educated. Women do have birth control. So if you want to get a woman, you've got to work harder for it now. Whereas in the past, what you had to do was like just actually work a job and you'd be basically guaranteed a wife. Well, no, it's not to me. And, and this is just my opinion. This is not going to be popular with everybody, but in my opinion, it's not about the men being top one percenters. It's, it's not even about taking away what women already have. Like, you can't put the cat back in the bag. That's not going to happen. Katie, we've missed you. Haven't seen you in a bit. Uh, greatest impact in the in the last five years, the microphone. Girl, <laughs> greatest negative impact to the microphone. I would give mine up, too. My thing is, it's about carrying on a tradition of what you know works. I feel like in this day and age, we're we're just on this 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 mission to dismantle everything that came before us, even if it worked. Um, I I mean, so I don't necessarily disagree with you. So progressives or people really far on the left have a habit of wanting to um, dismantle everything without asking why it was the way that it was, right? So you'll have people on the left saying things like, "Oh, like gender roles are all fake." That it's like, okay, well, we've had like ten thousand years of them. Like, are they really that fake? Um, so I agree with you that there are some traditions that even if we don't carry them on, we at least need to understand like where they came from. But mm-hmm. um, the world is changing. Even the way that our traditions, um, you know, show themselves in society changes. And I think that if you don't want to get left behind by the world, then like you have to change along with it. Like some things are. Welcome early Bitcoin investor. Thank you so much for becoming a member. <clears throat> Giggle says he downplays the internet while using the internet to make money by way of over half a million subscribers. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that's actually a good observation, Giggles. probably here to stay like um like some type of gendered dynamic in society like men and women are different uh, we're never going to be the exact same that's never going to happen but um some things will change pretty dramatically like maybe the way some of those gender roles play out or how dating plays out and you either adapt or die and that's like that is the only thing you can do because like you said before it's not going back in the box of women not having reproductive rights and of women not working jobs like that's not going to change so you have to figure out a way moving forward as a man i think 
Okay, well, let me ask you this. <clears throat> while we're while we're in this uh, uh, country, and the men in this country, the men in the West, are practicing this sort of this sort of new age of enlightenment. Would you would you say that men of other countries are doing the same, or would you say that they're pretty much sticking to the traditional uh, construct of what a man is? I think the West got here first, but I think other countries are slowly starting to go through the same processes that we did. Like we're just the trailblazers, but they're definitely following suit. So like if you go to like the Middle East, the men are going to be uh, quite a bit more traditional. But, you know, like even in Saudi Arabia, as of a few years ago, women can drive. Um, you know, if you go to really, um, you know, older countries or places where the roles are a lot older, they're gonna, you're going to find pretty traditional men. But you'll find that like their birth rates are dropping off. They're not having a ton of children because they're not all dying, you know, to dysentery or some random shit. Um, you will find that like the rest of the world is slowly following in our footsteps. And that seems to be a trend that's not going to change anywhere. Like I don't know any place it's like. I just found a solution. It is a solution that they've been talking about for a long time. But I'm pretending like I came up with it. Y'all should create a movement that tells men to get their passports and go to these countries where they can get these traditional women. I think <laughs> I think that would I think that would be a good fix. So like if you were, if you think about like the Middle East, for example, and you're saying women there are traditional. Um, because they haven't followed the West yet. Before they start following the West, you could go to pa Pakistan. You could go, I don't know why I just said Pakistan, because it was the first thing that came to mind. You could go to Asia. You could go to India. You could go to the Middle East. You could go to all these different places where you can have these traditional roles. You can be the provider and the woman can stay at home and raise the kids. I think y'all should test it. I think y'all should test it. I don't foresee, when you all start doing this, I don't foresee anything going wrong with this. I think this will be perfect. For the men who want traditional women, they can go to the Middle East. They can go somewhere where their traditional values and see what happens. Again, I don't foresee like people going there not having money to come back. <laughs> I don't I don't foresee groups of women coming together to kick people out of the country. I don't I don't I don't see any of that happening. I think y'all should try it out and then come back and let us know how it works for you. I think I think that's a good way to test if y'all are traditional. We are super successful and we have stuck with our traditional roles and nothing has changed. Like all the most successful countries have been moving in this direction. And I can't think of any like counterexamples to that. Well, the thing about it is there are there are countries that you know, I'm pretty sure you you pay attention to politics. There are countries that have made it a point to make for certain that they don't have certain things on their television shows and they don't have certain literature and things of that nature. What what I see in my personal opinion, I see China, I see Russia, I see India making it a point to make sure that they continue to raise traditional men. And when I say traditional men, I mean the more... Uh... True, true, true. So go to China, Russia, and India. Go. I say go. I would start at Russia. I would move right now. Right now. Right. There is nothing happening right now overseas in Russia regarding Russia. There's zero things happening. If I were you, I would grab my passport and just move to Russia. Skill, I would do that. I, I, I would do that. I would go and move to Russia, and then I would move to China, and then from China I would go to India, and then come back to the U.S. and come back and let us know what happened. I, I mean, I would do that. Go for your traditional women. I think you should. I think you should. I think U.S. is dampening your shine and your ability to be masculine. So I think you should go to Russia specifically first. That's what I think now, like right now, quickly. For lack of a better phrase, the, the, the John Wayne, no nonsense type of guy. I, not John Wayne girl, period. Actually, if you want to be John, go to Ukraine instead. Go to Ukraine and then Russia. I, and, and I believe that they're doing that so that they can actually build stronger militaries. So I'll pose the question to you that I um, that I asked the guy last night that came on to my show. Do you think that the 18-year-olds of our country would be able to storm the beaches of Normandy today? 
Um, if they had to, I think I think you can. I think that I feel like the circumstances create the people to some extent. Um, I think that when you think of like an average eighteen year old today, you think of a guy with blue hair that's like crying on a college campus because he got treated by something or some shit, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like a lot of people think that, but I think that like if our country were under legitimate threat, or if we had to go and like fight somewhere, like we could do it, right? I mean, like compare for instance like Russia's invasion into Ukraine, which has been a disaster for Russia. Compare that to mm -hmm. our invasion into Iraq. Um, now, whether you agree or disagree with that invasion, okay, I'm pretty sure Saddam was gone in, like two weeks. So like we can say like yeah, like okay, well, we'll okay, sure, but we can say that like okay, well our people are weak, but like when our military has to do shit, like shit gets done like very quickly. Um, and a lot of that is on the backs of like technological improvement and the sophistication of our for this man with the hat to sit up there and diminish the might of the American military is actually ridiculous to me. Like, to sit there and say, we can't do anything, we are weak people, the military is weak. Girl, what? We still have the strongest military in the world. What do you mean? No, I'm not going to put a, a, a caveat on that at all. We have the strongest military in the world. It is what it is. <laughs> what do you mean? We wouldn't be able to storm. No, no but it would probably be drones. <laughs> I literally can't do this. <clears throat> Notice how his examples of dominant men uh, and leaders are white. Oh, I, it has. It, it did not. It did not escape me. It did not even for a little. It did not escape that did that piece of information did not miss me at all. I would tell Angry Man, talk to Zoom <laughs> and no, not John Wayne. <laughs> Girl, they have we have our own Zeus. We have a black network called Zeus. It's doing really well. It's giving very positive uh imagery of black man our military today like we don't need i mean like in, in a way that's a good example you bring up because like we don't need people to storm a beach and run in and just get mowed down by machine guns anymore like the world has evolved um i don't know if you watch like that combat footage separate but jesus christ people are flying around drones today just like dropping grenades onto people and killing them like it's insane yeah. how much the technology has changed for all of that um and even when you look at places like China and India, um, I got talking about this recently because he got really mad because somebody brought up a similar point. They're like, oh no, China's very traditional. I think that when you are stuck in like a very developing area and all you can do is like eat, sleep, work, and that's all you've got, then yeah, you're, you're, pro you're not going to have many like, um, people aren't going to be talking about like, you know, transgender people when they're just trying to survive, right? You're not going to see marches for LGBT rights in, um, you know, in, in, in places where people are struggling just to get enough food on the table. I agree with you there. But as places in India and China have gotten more successful as their median incomes have grown, uh, there is a lot of social dissatisfaction in some of these places, whether it's pushing for um, more gay people to be represented in areas or whether it's pushing for, right now it's usually representation of government, but there's like this hierarchy of stuff that you push for. Or like if you're developing, you're fighting for like, I need fucking food and water. Then it's like, I need good job opportunities. Then it's like, I need representation. I don't feel like you should be explaining this to him. That's all I'm going to say there, but I'm going to let it go. Presentation of my government. I don't want to live in an authoritarian regime. And then once you've got that shit out of the way, then it's like, okay, I think that women should have more rights. I want to talk about LGBT issues. But like when you're still working on that like foundational shit, yeah, you're not going to see much in the terms of like what we fight about for social social issues in the West, right? But I mean, to some extent, I think that's a marker of our progress. Like in some ways, it's really annoying when somebody goes on Twitter and they're like, I encountered a lot of sexism today because like somebody called me a bitch. But in other ways, it's actually really cool because it's like, okay, cool. Well, you, in your mind, really bad sexism is somebody calling you a bitch. That's a mark of progress, in my opinion, because it means there's a whole bunch more sexism that you're not experiencing than people in the past did. Well, I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm a traditional guy, so I'm not really into the progressive stuff. Okay, then move to Russia. Like, I, I don't understand. There, there's not a... Moscow is calling, girl. And not a Moscow mule. <laughs> just, just go, girl. Like, go. Ukraine has been calling, girl. Palestine is open and available. Like, just go. Just do it. it, it, it like Nike, just do it. You are not a traditional guy when you have a, a child at a wedlock. Like, you're not. When you're... I think they talked about the welfare thing here. Maybe. I don't know. Let me not put people's business out there. And all of that, because I feel like... I feel like when we get to the point where we allow, like... Human beings having a imagination is, is awesome. But I feel like sometimes we, 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 we've become so successful. It's kind of like what Bain said in The Dark Knight. Success has defeated us. Like, I feel like we start going into, when you start looking at intersectionalism, which I don't want to get into a huge debate about that, um, you know, because I don't, I don't want to get, uh, I guess, canceled. But when you look at intersectionalism, the reason why there's so much conflict there, the reason why there's so much conflict in this country when you have these discussions and these debates and stuff is because we're, we're starting to get off into the weeds with certain ideas and certain ideologies 
And it would be one thing if people lived their lives and, and didn't try to force their lifestyle or force their ideology onto everyone. But that's exactly what we, we live in nowadays. In fact, we live in a society now where if you are a traditional you are literally trying to force your own ideas on people. What do you mean? You are literally forcing... You You are mad at women for getting educated. You're mad at women for actualizing. You are trying to force your ideas on women. And they're saying, no, sir, I don't like you physically. You don't have any money. You don't have any intellect. I'm not about to listen to you. So now you're screaming and you have a bunch of men agreeing with you. But no women, woman, they're not following you. And you are mad and you want to push your ideas on them while complaining about other people pushing their ideas on you. I'm a traditional man. Good for you. Good for you. I mean, you being a traditional man seems odd when you have children already out of wedlock. That don't seem very traditional to me. You being a traditional man while the government is paying for you. All right, period traditional person if you believe in certain things like let's say for argument's sake that you're a religious person let's say that you're a christian let's say that you believe in a nuclear family let's say that you uh believe in just being a regular guy with a regular wife and children you're under attack today so where's your wife where's your wife how are you claiming traditional so overtly where's your wife show her to me By all of the people that are like, oh, you're old fashioned and that's not progressive. And we have to be understanding of, of this group and that group. You're literally under attack. Like the, most men that are traditional men are constantly getting a finger wag, wagged in their face. That's the reason why the whole red pill concept and, you know, the manosphere, whether it's the white one or the black one, that's the entire reason it exists. Because men feel that they're being marginalized, ostracized from society and treated like they're just innately toxic. And that's wrong. So I again, there are a lot of things that you're agreeing or that you're saying that I agree with. I just don't think that they're that gendered. When you talk about like getting off into the weeds with certain ideologies and attacking people for not believing in the right things, I think we do have a big problem with that today in society. I think a lot of it comes from the left kind of um, having their thumbs on a lot of the levers of cultural power. But I don't think that, I just don't think it's like a gendered thing. That's like a, a political ideologically driven thing. Um, now, when you talk about like men are traditional men and they're getting fingers wagged in their faces, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's happening. I feel like people mix up a lot of the toxic aspects of red pill shit with like traditional things. If you are a, if you're a good guy, you're working a good job, you go to church and you're looking for like a traditional partner, you got your shit handled. I don't think anybody's wagging their finger at you. In fact, because I've talked to a lot of conservative women, I think conservative women are dying to find men like that. But oftentimes one of the biggest complaints that I hear, and I know men have the loudest voices online, so you hear about like all the horrors and sluts and blah, blah, blah. When I talk to traditional women or conservative women, their complaints are always like, I have no fucking idea where you can ever find a good conservative man. They don't exist. It's a bunch of schizoid young men that sit in their basements, play computer games all day and fantasize about like having a harem of 50 women they fuck, like the guys on Fresh and Fit tell them to do, right? Like I don't, I don't feel like like places in the manosphere are producing these factories of like good, positive, solid young men that are like good conservative men because their engagement with religion is really bad. Look at fucking, um, not to, I don't want to go down the whole Andrew Tate if you don't want to, but like Andrew Tate coming out as Islamic after fucking running a casino and a cam business. It's like the two biggest, most haram things you can do in Islam, right? Or like a lot of these guys saying we need to embrace more like Christian values while telling you to have wanted open relationships where you're fucking younger and younger women every year. Um, like, I, I don't think that these are the centers of society that are going to be creating the, like, tra the traditional conservative man of tomorrow. It's just like the new marketing ploy that's being sold. And then all these guys that are falling into this shit, I call it OnlyFans for men, um, because it's just like it's rotting and destroying their minds, thinking that, or leading them to think they're going to be something that they're never going to be, and it's not preparing them for the future and in a way that I think a conservative person would be. Well, you know, I can't really speak for the whole space, but I do know that the vast majority of the guys that watch my show on a regular basis are those traditional type guys. Now, I've granted a lot of them are already married. A lot of you have over 500,000 subscribers. I don't know. How you know most of the people watch your, your, your show are traditional men? Where are all these traditional men, girl? Show, show us. Because if you are the example of a traditional man, girl, we, ain't nobody want that. I saw a post from a friend of mine that said, I just want a, a good man to treat me well. And then in parentheses, she was like, not ugly. <laughs> Tell me why. She said they're dragging her in her <laughs> they're dragging her in her um in her DMs. <laughs> Cause like in my mind, people are like, we, we I'll treat you well, but I'm ugly. And it's like, girl, you, you don't go. <laughs> The not ugly part is, I don't know why she reposted this. The not ugly part, I feel like, is implicit. I feel like that's implicit. Like, I feel like that's the part people don't say out loud. So when, when men come online, they're like, women say they want a good guy, but she don't want me. It's like, 
Ooh. See, see, the, the thing about it is like, <laughs> the, the, the thing, <laughs> like, women are complaining that they don't have any man, but I'm always trying to take her out. And like, okay, she's wrong for saying she don't got no man wanting to date her. She is wrong because she does have a man trying to date her. It's just like, <laughs> traditional doesn't he have children with women he's not married to and she's on welfare or something yeah no that's the part i'm waiting for because i need y'all to remember that he said <laughs> thank you ferris i need y'all to remember that he said he was traditional so let's hear this traditional foolishness that he's been let's hear this traditional entanglement them already in relationships but what they find is when they here's the issue that they find let me let me break it down for you what's happening is when they go out into the world and attempt to live a tradition and yes i'm fully aware that the manosphere could take that clip and say see even themis know that these women don't want some of these men and i would say yeah i do know that you don't have to clip it i will come on your platform and say yes there are men trying to date these women and these women are like mm, no and your problem is that they can say no. <laughs> your problem is that they can say no. National life. They're constantly being told these guys are constantly, you know, meeting barriers, trying to live a traditional life. Now, when they go out here, I, I don't know where the, you know, these conservative uh, traditional women that you're talking about are. I don't know where they congregate, but this, these are the complaints that guys give to me, that they have so much difficulty finding these type of women, um, especially in, you know, in black culture. In black culture, we have a, you know, we have an issue where there's this, there's this culture of promiscuity, you know, there's this culture of, you know, the slut walk and all of those different types of things where every single woman they encounter is, is part of the sexual revolution. So they're going to be, you know, a little more um, free sexually. And that's a nice way of putting it. You know, so when these guys are out here actually looking for marriageable women, they're they're coming up short. They can't find any because part of the new age way of thinking is that women should be able to do the things that men have traditionally done. And the sad part is whenever you hear that, it's always women taking the most negative things of men and then touting that as empowerment. This is what the guys are, are, are encountering on a regular basis where the women, they, they want to be they want to do the same things. They want to have the same quality as men, which is fine, but they don't want the same accountability, the same responsibility. It, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you're willing to be in the right, um, have you heard of the, uh, have you heard of this? I know you've heard of the saying, have you heard of saying dress for the job that you want? Yeah. Yeah. The idea is like, you should carry yourself through life um, like you're where you want to be because that's how you're going to find that place essentially, right? I'll hear people say this, like, I don't know where to find conservative women. And then you like ask them, well, where are you looking? And they're like, well, um, I've tried Tinder. I've gone on Bumble. I've gone on Hinge. And it's like, okay, have you, do you go to a church? Like, do you have a community of like conservative friends? Um, have you been involved in any political or community organizing? Because like, especially in the black community, right? Like women are like the backbones of all of these things. Um, and if you're looking for conservative, <laughs> that triggered him. That that I know he felt that to his bone. I and I think I don't actually think. <clears throat> I don't think Destiny was like playing nice. I think Destiny was attempting to. Y'all not gonna convince me. Destiny didn't just throw that out there just to get under his skin. This is the problem. <laughs> They're weaponizing black women against black men. <laughs> They're weaponizing black women. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> You ain't slick. Destiny, you are not slick. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there. Whew. Whew. Shout out to Jada Pickett for standing by a man who has died and can no longer embarrass her. <laughs> Stop. She said she wasn't in love with... She said she wasn't in love with... Um, with Tupac. <laughs> <sighs> he's upset that women are treating men <clears throat> the way men treat women and he doesn't like it but still won't advocate for men to change instead have women revert just 
taking what men dish out. Yep, that's exactly what he's advocating for. <clears throat> Jada is learning, uh, learning us how to vet, not learning us how to vet. <laughs> oh my God, why did you throw that in there? Now you're going to piss him off. Conservative people, and you're in those areas, you'll find them there. But I feel like people aren't setting themselves up in a conservative lifestyle. Like, if you tell me you're looking for a conservative woman and you're not part of your local church, like, Jesus, that's like the number one place to start, right? Because these are where, off of churches, are where all your community building activities are going to stem from. Every church has a bulletin board where people are doing things. A lot of churches are involved in, like, community outreach. You can volunteer. You can get a ton of people this way. Um, but people aren't willing to go out and look for it. Uh, yeah, I just, I, but I feel like in terms of that type of advice, I never. I know all he heard. I don't care how he responded. All he heard was that black women were the backbone of that the community. That's all he heard. I hear Red Pillars talking about that. It's always like um, the sexual marketplace and high-value men are these things you have to do to exploit the dynamics of the evolutionary psychology of women so that you can fuck as many women as possible and that's why you're going to be 1%. And like, that's the message I hear over and over and over and over and over again. Rather than like, look up your local archdiocese, start going to your church every Sunday, and when church ends, everybody's chatting with each other because that's what they do. Sometimes the priest or whatever come out talk to people and you just like talk to people and you meet friends that way. Like, that's how you organically grow a, a group of friends. But I just I don't hear that advice ever in the no, manosphere. I, I never hear that. I, I hate the reason why you never hear that in the manosphere mm -hmm. is because the biggest hoes usually go to church. They're usually the most promiscuous. They're usually the Where's your stat? So where's your stat? Like, I'm not saying you're wrong, because uh, <laughs> whenever I go to church, everyone wants to feed me. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but everyone wants to feed me. Everyone want to do Bible study. Everyone want to go and coffee, go for coffee. So I don't know what... <laughs> I be living... I don't know why y'all don't go to church. I love church. I love going. I love being in church. Everyone wants to like save my soul, and I I'm here for it. I like the the effort. <laughs> I like the effort. I I give back to. I do give back. The most trifling. Like guys wish it was that easy. They could just go to church and find a good wholesome girl at church. They can't. That that's where that's usually where the worst ones are at. Do you, on average, do you think the women in church are gonna be more promiscuous or like women that are like at a bar or a club? Bro, they do the same thing. So every they, they, so every woman everywhere, there are no they're, more conservative they're, women. They're twerking and they're bro. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Maybe the problem is. Maybe I can defend the, the, the dignity of women so much because whenever I go out, there is always a woman there to, like, give me a compliment, smile and nod at me. Like, the, inevitably, there will be a Black woman that I hug throughout the night. Not, I didn't initiate this hug. But the, inevitably, so I go to the bar and there are two women there and I'm like, oh, let me order my drink. She, they, They're standing here. Let me just randomly buy them a drink and then I go off and they will find me. They will literally find me on the dance floor, sandwich me, hug me, tell me I'm amazing, thank you, and then go on about their business. And I feel like a lot of men aren't getting these looks <laughs> You know how amazing it feels to have two women come up to you and like no one else knows what I what happened at the bar and just uh, like embrace you and then move on about their business. <laughs> it must feel bad. It must feel all kind of sad. If all you've experienced is women just like disregarding you, they treat women treat me well. I don't know. Look, I don't know what I I, I might need to teach a class fifteen thousand dollars for a class on 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 how to make women like you. <laughs> Please note the only answer I'm going to give is be a good person. That is that is the only thing I'm going to tell you. The only thing I'm going to tell you is be a good person. Because, like, the way y'all talk about these women, I'm like, I'm confused. 
And it's not just women they are dating, right? They are talking about women generally. And so it's like, my my dad would say the same thing about my mom. I don't know, girl. The biggest age is, is preaching. <laughs> Theme is be living his best life. Sprinkles, experience, sprinkles, sprinkles. I wonder how she's doing. <laughs> Theme is you don't date women. Who told you that? <laughs> Who told you that? I be taking my friends on dates. I be, I be taking my friends on date. I be. I beat. <laughs> Let me stop talking like that. I hope my mom's not watching. Bro, they're twerking in church. The, the, when you look at when you look at the black community, the vast majority of the men don't even go to church anymore. They've, they've checked out, and the reason why they checked out is because of the ridiculousness. That you can keep the Lord in mind when you dirty wine. <laughs> oh my God, the Bratz doll has been a member for twenty five months. Thank you so much. Thank you. He, he said they're in church dropping it low for Jesus. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Man. He said these women are in church dropping it low for Jesus. What's that song? Keep the Lord in mind when you're not too they're all a funky and broke, naturally repelling. <laughs> is that what it is? Do I have a pl I probably do have a pleasant aura. I do. I do. Someone actually said that verbatim to me. Someone is like, you have a nice aura. I'm like, wait, wait till I start acting a fool. Whew, he doesn't understand how dumb he sound. Girl, I, I'm glad he don't because this is fun tea. Hunty, <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. I do think in songs, by the way. The fact that H go to church to be delivered and get called church. Stop. Wait. <laughs> All right. I need to get. <laughs> I guess I can't breathe. <laughs> I need to get back on screen. Oh, and I didn't. I, I'm not on mute. I'm not muted. Wait, wait, sorry. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I kind of thought I, I thought I was muted. Me just meing, you are not on time out. You are not. A, you need to be blocked. You need. <laughs> you need to be blocked. <laughs> <laughs> this woman, this woman, this woman, I'm trying to get, this, this woman, I'm trying to get saved. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave. Let me find. Wait. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. I have to take a break. I'm sorry. I literally have to take a break. Um, I'm gonna play the a, a commercial on repeat. I need. I need to go for it. I, I can't do this. I want to can. I do. I do want to can, but I can't. Mm -mm. Nope. I'm sorry.
All right. Sweet best best friends. All right, see you guys best friends. I'm not playing with y'all. I think I almost passed away just now. Mm -mm. Y'all, this is this can't be right. <clears throat> y'all are not right. Y'all are not right. <laughs> I have to read it again. I'm sorry. I have to. I have to. I have to, I have to, I have to read it again. The fact. <laughs> The fact that H go to church to be delivered and you go to church that's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. You right. <clears throat> you right. That that is crazy. That is crazy. <coughs> That is crazy. <clears throat> but I'd be on my Sukihana this Sunday. <laughs> Sex with Red and Sukihana. Sex with Red and Sukihana in the church. <laughs> and they should be. Come as you are. Come as you are. Mary Magdalene was all up there, all up in the church. <clears throat> don't, don't quote me on that. The actual church girls avoid them. That's that's why. <clears throat> Whoever put WAP, y'all need to stop. I'm not reading the chat. I'm not. I'm, y'all are not gonna do this. Like the took black men out of the home night. I'm not doing that again. Mm -mm. The next day I couldn't talk. It's going on in the church. You, you got the you got the Baptist preacher actually having sex with, with women in the congregation. You've got women actually twerking in church. You've got the, the, the single mothers sitting on the front pew of the church. Like the church, especially in the black community. I can't speak for the white community, but in the single mothers sitting at on the first pew. Why is that why was that a list of grievances? <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> why was that? Why was that amongst the list of grievances you have? Didn't you create a single mother? I'm done. The black community, the church is lost. Oh, uh -huh. please remember to like the video. Thank you, Desiree. I appreciate that. Y'all, I don't feel loved. Please let me not let me stop trying to do the emotional manipulation. I'm getting into my alpha. Y'all want y'all better like the <laughs> Y'all better. <laughs> Y'all feel. <laughs> Let me stop. Hey, can you? Yeah, can y'all like the video for me, please? <laughs> and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <clears throat> Bro, it's done. Where? Okay. Well, where are all of these single moms coming from? Where are they coming from? Yeah. Well, because if, I mean, if the church is fucked because it's all like single moms and people like it seems like like it takes two to tango, right? Like you can't, can't just be all like all on black women. Well, right? Actually, no, it does. Actually, no, it doesn't take two to tango. And the reason why is because what's going on in the black community is you have a large group of women that are actually having sex with multiple. Multiple men having children with multiple men. You actually have twice as many women in the black community have children as the men. Twice as many. Yeah, but why is that? 
There are some there, there are some cities there's where there's like three black women for every one man that's not in jail, right? Like I mean, like depending on the city that you live in, the availability for some of these black women to even find a guy, the competition is number, fierce. There's a number of factors. The competition is very fierce, and there's there's a number of reasons for that. Number one, we have a small percentage of the population. Black women, last time I checked, outnumbered the men by about three or four million, something crazy like that. Part of the reason is because of Planned Parenthood. Um, in our community, they actually go to Planned Parenthood to the tune of 367,000 per year. That's a thousand every day. So that already right there, you have a, a, a lower um, population of, of just lies, 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 lies. That's not true. <clears throat> so the amount of male, female birth are roughly the same. It drops off at around age 18 and the leading cause of death unalizing for black men is homicide from ages zero to 44 y'all playing in people's face if you are upset about the the sex ratio imbalance that exists you are not going to plan parenthood as a means to solve that problem you are going to the homicide statistics that's where you are going and it's not four million. Sin already talked about this. It's less than two. How are you going to use that as a weapon against women when they're not the reason that your numbers are dwindling? Our numbers are dwindling. The leading cause of analyzing. For black men is homicide. You should know this. It is not Planned Parenthood that creates this kind of imbalance. And the gender imbalance actually works in favor of black men in terms of the ability to select. I don't like that. <clears throat> I do. I despise a liar. As black people in general do to that. Um, in addition to that, there's a there has been an issue with mass incarceration thanks to good old Joe Biden with the ninety four crime bill. So you have a lot of brothers that are locked up. So that diminishes the amount of black men as well. In addition to that, you have the cultural problem of black women not being very easy to get along with and and not being easy to cohabitate with. So you have black men who seek relationships outside of the black race. You know, outside. Yeah, great, 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 great. That's fine. That's fine. Black women are not easy to get along with. Black women are the problem. That's why black men have to go and seek other races of women. Yeah, um, cool question, question, question. How are those relationships going? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. The last time I checked, y'all were on getting passports. Y'all were getting passports because there is no group of women in America. So I'm assuming after y'all tested, you said black women were too disagreeable. Y'all decided to date other groups of women in America. Now y'all start a dusty movement to go overseas because the women in America aren't, like, are they all disagreeable? Like, is that what's happening? All races of women are the problem. Single mother here, single mother there. Everyone is a single mother, and the women, all of these women are the problem. Once upon a time, there would be a black man and another race of woman in a video on some newspaper talking about how they're sweet, submissive, and how they are better women. They've also now become single, single mothers. And now they're complaining too. And now y'all are deciding, oh, they were all so bad. Let's go overseas and see what's happening. In the Philippines, there was an article written by the BBC <clears throat> pointing out that these biracial children are living in poverty. Most likely to be found in poverty were the Black and Filipinos, biracial children. So maybe it was the Philippines. It was the, the Philippines was the problem too then. Y'all are playing too much in people's faces. And we, we don't like our faces being played in. Remember when he said any idiot can get on the internet, LOL. It, it's such it's a self-read. And I the thing is, no one in the manosphere actually, well, the manosphere is essentially dead, but no one in the manosphere can grapple with the reality that. 
you failed with every group of women. You failed with every group of women. Maybe it is not the women's fault at this time. The most successful relationship statistically for a black man is with a black woman. The, the most successful relationship dynamic is for a black man to be with a black woman. It's most successful for that black man. The most successful relationship dynamic for a black woman is with a white man. The most successful relationship dynamic for a white man is with a black woman, statistically. Make that make sense. You don't see the common denominator here? And I'm not saying this is truth as like an individual issue. I'm saying statistically, this is the research. What you do with that, and I think you should take people on a person-by-person -person basis, right? Like, figure that out. But when you're making general statements like this, you're going to get dragged. The problem isn't everyone else. The problem can't be everyone else. And if it is, then you are not a leader. You don't effectuate change. Change happens to you. You are not in front of, you're behind of. Like, it, it is that simple. If it feels so idiotic to watch men sit online. And I don't mind, mean you shouldn't complain. You should complain. But I don't like people complaining about things that highlights that they're not a leader. Complain and say, I feel inadequate. Complain and say, I don't know how to build. Complain and say, I don't know how to get that which I want. Do that kind of complaint. Don't be on here crying and whining about people who are doing better than you. Statistically. I was going to say statistical wise, but I, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't in that bag. Isn't the sociology I thought STEM mattered? I mean, <laughs> mathematics took black men at home. <laughs> Gene May Jenkins has entered the child, period. Because I that turned out. The dragon, she was trying to tame the dragon. <laughs> He is, he is a black man out the home, five of them to be exact. Nasty work. Nasty work. Point of correction. They fail with every woman. It's time for them to try, man. <laughs> like, I just don't like this. It's like... The stats are the stats. Until you're going to provide me information that say these stats are racist stats and they don't actually apply and they are wrong, the stats are the stats. And you don't get to come up here and say, I feel that therefore I know. Absolutely not. I don't trust you and I don't trust your thoughts. Side of the country, you know, with the passport bros, with SYSBM, all of those different things. So then you, you end up with an even lower amount. And what happens is... you. Okay, so here, that's silly that sounds, black women are disagreeable, thus passport bros. No, because there are other groups of women in America. So passport bros implies that those men could not succeed with any group of women in America. To be clear, I've developed a sense of sympathy for the passport bros, some of them, because some of them are toxic. But I've developed some sympathy. It must be it must be really sad for someone to believe that they're in a country where there's zero women who would date them. <laughs> so they have to go overseas. Like I can't imagine what that feels like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to move on. You have sisters, you have black women out here that are more prone 
to deal with what people call the Pookies and the Ray Rays. And they'll go out here and they'll have kids, they'll have children with one, two, maybe even three different uh, men. And the reason why that is is because it's been incentivized by our government, unfortunately. A lot of these women are doing that in order to supplement their lifestyle with welfare, food stamps, child support, all of those different things. There's a bunch of different factors that weigh into that. Okay, for whatever we want to blame black women for this, black men are just as culpable, right? We can complain about the mass incarceration from the 93 crime bill all we want, but Joe Biden doesn't make somebody sell weed. Joe Biden doesn't make somebody carry an unregistered firearm. Joe Biden doesn't make somebody a gangbanger. Like, these are choices that are still being made that are being made by black men that fuck over black women in the community. Um, and, and I think that the cultural problems stem from a lot of the kind of like dysfunction that goes back and forth. I don't think it's fair to blame black women on everything. Like, okay, we can talk well, about like food stamps well, and wealth and all that too, but well, that exists for black people and white people and every other type of person well, in the United States. But it seems like the black community well, has like a special problem with it, right? Well, well hold on. No, when, when we're talking about that, when we're talking about. So Destiny speaks quickly, but when you shoot off like that, it's when you know something and it's at the tip of your tongue and you've been waiting to say it. <laughs> he was just going. Sir, why didn't you even put a pause to breathe? <laughs> why did he... <laughs> I felt like I slightly got dragged. I did. About that, there, there are things that are very specific, okay? Um, one book written by, um, uh, what is her name? Elizabeth Hinton, who I think went to Yale. I think she's a, she's a professor in African-American studies at either Yale or I think Yale. You should have stopped him right there and kicked him off the platform. You don't get to do that. You don't get to cite anyone any not definitely not a woman historian you don't get to do that at all but not only women you don't get to cite anyone you don't get to cite any historian what do you mean yeah, if i'm not mistaken she wrote from the war on poverty to the war on crime and she pointed out through her research right after you get the uh uh the um 65 voters rights act you actually have a, a overhauling of the criminal justice system where they started policing urban areas more heavily. This is right after the, the Industrial Revolution where you have black people migrating into the um, urban centers. You have them policing them more heavily, okay? You actually have what is uh, the equivalent of today, billions of dollars uh, funneled into that criminal program. I forgot the name of it, but the purpose was to create probation. He is not wrong, by the way. He's not wrong on this. What I don't like is you can go and find specific research to explain why black men are having issues. You can find that specific research, but all of the research that is in your face regarding black women and women experience generally, you just completely ignore. You just completely, to be fair, I don't think he read this. I don't think, I think he heard someone talk about it. But you can go there. So you will go to any depth that you can to excuse black men's behavior, men who are behaving poorly, that is. You will go and find what you need to, to talk about why, to find excuses for behavior. You'll go to any length. Please tell me why we were taking drugs now. Also, tell me why we are killing each other. Tell me why we're abandoning our children. Because that's not explained in the research. It is not. Sociologists come up with theories around poverty and certain kinds of crime. And this isn't one of them. You tried it. <clears throat> Please remind me why they're having this conversation with a wife. Because they're trying to convince Destiny that Black women are the problem. I don't know why. Why do you need, as the leader, you claim, why are you convincing anyone that, regardless of who the problem is, if you're leading on the project, you take full responsibility for it, for the project. If it goes well, you share the credit. If it goes bad, you take the blame. What do you mean? Officers, uh, all of these different things to create a revolving door um, in the criminal justice system, which has affected the black community significantly. So yeah, it's wrong for any black man to go out here and commit crimes and do things that he doesn't have any uh, business, but it is it has been historically proven over and over again that black men have been disproportionately targeted by the criminal justice system, especially with um, especially with uh, uh, particular crimes. When you have certain uh, um, narcotics that black men get a harsher sentence for, whereas other groups of men might get a slap on the wrist or even worse when it comes to 
This is the research that is out there. This is pop culture research. It is fully accurate. It is completely accurate. And if you're in the comments right now typing, it's not true. It is true. Black men in particular, but also black women, black men, black people are disproportionately overrepresented in the prison system. When it comes to drug crimes, I'm fully aware that um, black people disproportionately get sentenced for things that white folks get a slap on the wrist for, if that. Completely agree. Completely agree here. Abandoning your children. Homicide. How you explain those? All these excuses, all of these excuses, you just, just the litany of it, just excuse here, excuse here, excuse, go, no, no, this is wrong, this is, and it shows that even though there's not a lot of intellect being showcased, I'm not saying he's not smart, he might be, I don't know this man, even though there's not a lot of intellect being highlighted currently in this conversation, there is enough to try and justify black men's behavior. That is a problem. Unaliving somebody, more often than not, when a white guy goes to jail for unaliving somebody, they end up getting a manslaughter charge as opposed to second degree or whatever degree or whatever. Now, I'm not trying to play the victim Olympics. I'm just stating the facts. Like any of this can be looked up. It's. I also hate how everyone is Republican. All these men online are Republican. The black men online are Republican until it's time to take accountability. Every one of them, they are super Republican until it's time to take accountability. Then they are like, oh, the system. What system, sir? What, what system? What do you mean? I understand why women who are pushing back against the manosphere decide that they will not engage in talking about systems. I understand why. Because it's used as an excuse. It's used as an excuse, whereas poverty and the system around how certain people end up in certain areas where they're not access to healthy foods could cause to certain kinds of health problems in women in particular is very much overlooked. It is very much overlooked, even though there is a direct causal relationship between the kind of life you live and your health outcomes for women in particular areas, right? There's a direct causal link there. They're going to ignore that. They got, oh, you're too overweight. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. There is a direct link between trauma and eating in a certain way. There's a direct link there, but you go overlook it. The tangential connection, right? The, 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 not even causal, but the, the sort of correlation between that which men have engaged in and poverty. It's so sort of, distant in terms of the link between poverty and that kind of behavior, but you use it, poverty that is, and system to justify that bad behavior that is merely tangentially related, but the direct causal connection between Black women and poverty, for example, just completely overlooked. Between Black women's ability to be independent Needing, like this, this ability to provide and care for yourself is a necessity in a community where the men are unwilling or unable to take care of these people. What do you mean? How do you not see the direct causal connection between, quote unquote, what you call feminism in the black community and the lack of support by these men? How do you not see that direct causal link? How do you not? But you see this very... Let's continue. <clears throat> the research is out there. Yeah, so it's not, just, yeah, it's not just that black men are just like, oh, we're going to go to prison or whatever. Like right around the time that they overhauled the uh, welfare program in 90, in, in freaking uh, 96, I'm um, not 96, in 65 and 66, you see a rise in single parent households. 
you see a rise in single parent households. You, you had a number of things that occurred that affect that. You, you had the emergence of the prison industrial complex. You, you're just coming out of the Vietnam War, which a lot of black men lost their lives to that. And now you have this welfare program where if you have a man in the house, one of the stipulations is you, you don't qualify for those particular things, which is unfortunate because during that time you had a, a really serious problem with poverty. So there's a number of factors that play into all of that. So to preface this, I just will comment as a small job. I think it's funny that you're citing a woman who is a historian who went to Yale. So historians are important, right? That is funny. That is that's hilarious. Yeah, sure. That book, America on Fire, I think, or the, or the Poverty One or whatever. Right? Funny is not the word you were looking for. The word is not funny that you were looking for. I won't say what the word is that you're looking for, but I assure you that Funny was not it, as he sits up there and smokes his cigarette, because what he can do is change his position to whatever he wants it to be throughout this entire conversation without a logical connection between that which he said previously and what he's saying now. That is a problem. And if you don't tell him, well, you're not his dad, father, so you don't have to tell him. Oh, irony is not the word. I was irony is correct, but irony was not the word I was looking. I was thinking. You don't owe him that. You don't owe him the ability to formulate complete thoughts into sentences and then arguments. You don't owe him that, but you should have told him. Not that. Oh, it's funny. No, it's not funny. You don't get to use it at all. When black women of the sexy red variety and blue-haired feminists dye their hair, the white man's hand... <laughs> I hate y'all. I hate y'all for this. Because... <clears throat> <clears throat> One of the powers, when I was a child, <clears throat> well, it's usually telekinesis, but one of the powers that I wanted was, you know what, let me leave it alone. <clears throat> I'm so, I'm so annoyed. Right. But um, regardless of that, um, everything you said might be true, but none of it's black women's fault. I just don't think it's fair to blame black women. Like, you can't blame black women for men being incarcerated. When police are policing these areas, black men are the ones that are engaging in the crime, the black women aren't. And I guess it just feels a little shitty to blame black women when, at the end of the day, they're the ones that get saddled with all of the community responsibility. They've got to be the backbone of, like, all these families, of all these churches, of all these things that are the only way these communities function are on the backs of these, like, single black women moms. And then say, well, hold on, let me finish. And then, and then for black men to turn and say, well, we got police really heavily. And so, you know, we got caught selling drugs. And that's why you guys are all single moms. And that's why your lives are fucked up. But, but it's black women's fault for everything that happens in the black community. Okay. I think there's a lot of fault that could be evenly okay. doled out to both sides of what I Okay, here, here, okay here, here's the thing with this, all right? There is so much nuance in all of that. I'm sure this, I am sure, I am sure you have so, <laughs> I am sure you have so much nuance. I'm sure you do. I'm sure, when it's time to take accountability leader, I'm sure you have a lot of responses. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you? Why, why wouldn't you have a lot of nuance? When it's time to take accountability, why would you do that? One, you have a lot of guys that were caught selling drugs that weren't selling drugs. OK, you have a lot of guys that had issues where they got pulled over and, oh, surprise, there's drugs in the car. Where did that come from? OK, so that's one thing. There's nuance like that. Doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. All right. How much to, how much of the time does that how much of the time do they plant drugs on you? <clears throat> I'm not saying they don't. I am not. I'm not dumb enough to sit up here and to pretend like this doesn't happen. Um, Purple has been a member for seven months. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm not saying it doesn't. It doesn't happen. I'm pretty sure it does happen. I would hate for me if something like that to happen to me after be announcing online that it doesn't happen. So I'm sure I'm going to go ahead and say it does happen. How often? And how do you know? Right. Then on top of that, when you're talking about it's not the black women's fault, black women are willing participants in a system that they actually know for a fact is 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 disproportionately prejudiced to their group of men. OK, oh, no. Because when you said the system earlier, you said black people and now you're saying the system is prejudiced against black men. So it's not prejudiced against black women. It's not prejudiced. So black women are just a part of the system subjugating black men. That's what's happening. So all the marches for black men, all the unwillingness to turn over 
the people in their families who are doing poorly um, are causing a ton of harm. Free black men from prison statements, all of this. Black women refusal to date anyone but black men. That's them working for the system. Got it. Okay, they know this. This this is not a game. They they go they go to these offices knowing that they can actually take advantage of the system by oh I'm in a relationship with a black man who ain't hitting on nothing and don't want to work and blah 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 all of those different things. So we we can't ignore that. We can't ignore that. Now to sit here and say oh it's all black women's fault. I never said it was all black women's fault, but there is a large percentage of black women who have been incentivized to have children out of wedlock. They've been incentivized to utilize a system that they know benefits them. And they do this on a regular basis. Okay, just as a quick on a regular basis. Do you really believe that there's like people out there that are like, I want to have a kid so I get welfare? Yes. I don't believe it. I know it. I don't believe it. I know it. Why do I, okay, why do why I do know my culture? Why do black women do this but not white women or Indian women or Asian women or other people? Well, I don't know if white women do this or not. A lot of white women on welfare too. I, I can't speak for white women because I'm not part of that, I'm not part of that culture, but I know what I grew up around. I've heard the conversations amongst women. I've heard the things that they've said. One of the issues that I point out in my um in my show, which is a real issue. During the time where, where uh, Gen Xers were younger and you had the, the boomer parents, you had this, this switch, like you talked about earlier, where the women started going into the workforce more and going to get their education more. Well, one of the things that happened is a lot of the boomer women would use their daughters to help them uh, uh, with the housework. So when mom goes off to, to work or whatever, uh, her daughter is helping raise the siblings. And what I've had a lot of women tell me, a lot of black women tell me, and I know it's anecdotal, but I've had a lot of women tell me one of their escapes was to have sex, uh, have, have a child with a guy because then she can get Section 8 or she can get public housing. And now she can move out and get the hell away from her mama's house where her mother's forcing her to cook, clean, and do all of the housework. And they... So, Section 8 voucher or... Women are having children to get housing that is largely a lottery system. To get away from their abusive parents. We're the, we're, we're the fathers. <clears throat> so these women are just having children by themselves. <clears throat> women just decide <clears throat> we're going to have a virgin birth. We're just going to have a virgin birth. <clears throat> the length to which you have to go to justify degeneracy is kind of spectacular at this point. Like, I'm actually, <clears throat> I'm very much amazed by the, the the sort of willingness to just disregard like I do know where the stem from by the way there is this idea of punishment that I believe fundamentally anchors all of, a lot of men believe that women should be punished for engage in engaging in in, in certain sexual behaviors right and that that there is anything called welfare for them is a problem because it means someone is taking care of the woman, even though this is mostly for the children. And it does actually bothers me because like in the quest to punish women, the, women, the children also get punished and there is no care. Like these people are like, welfare, welfare, welfare. Sir, the reason she's on welfare is because the child needs help. You can't afford it, and she can't afford it. What do you mean? Like, you can't afford it, she can't afford it. The child still needs help. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'll be back in 20 minutes. No, I feel you. I've, I was trying to figure out a way to make it not draining, but no, I feel you feel like slaves. I, I would have to like, I would, I like, I hate to be yeah. like a nerd and be like, we should look yeah. at this house, but like, I, people don't. This, like, there might be some people that do this, but like, single moms don't live glorious lives. Like, it sucks. Being a single mom sucks. You can get all the fucking welfare in the world, but nobody's but living say, like a queen on Section 8 housing. Right? I didn't, I didn't no, but I'm just say saying, I don't think people are choosing like, oh, like, I'm going to finally move out of my mom's house by having a kid and getting welfare. I don't think people are making choices like that. I think it might happen. And then people no, collect welfare afterwards. They, no, they actually 
being a single mother without resources and having to depend on welfare sucks. It does. There's no, there nothing to debate there. If you're Ebony Williams and you're choosing to be a single mother, maybe that doesn't suck. But being a single mother, having to take care of a child on your own sucks. There is no ifs, ands, or I don't care how much bundle of joy that child is, it sucks. You're not going to convince me otherwise, by the way. So having people sit up here like these women are literally planning their lives around trying to have kids so that they can get money from the government, it's like, no, sir, if you could have provided, she would probably be with you if you chose to be with her, marry her, take care of her, even if y'all don't get married, and take care of the children. I'm sure she would love that. I am sure most women would love that, but y'all can't. Can't even pay the child support. Because they, they, the, re, rea, the reality is that kids aren't blessing their burdens. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I should have said yeah so quickly because I've been calling children parasites and people have been mad. Look, y'all do, well, mm, that was overstepping my boundary a little bit. I think that we have made... Women, actually, women have made men believe that childbirth is nothing. Like, like I think a lot of men believe that childbirth is, like, just super simple and easy and whatever. And I don't know why, because it feels like they want to believe that as men. Because they won't, like, if you they could have children, they probably wouldn't. And so, like, you know how, you have to know how difficult that whole process is. So sitting there and just, like, pretending like she needs to be accountable for having a child, it's like, if she's a single mother, that is accountability enough. I think Mahalani Pink actually said this in one of her video. That is your accountability. Raising the child by yourself is your accountability. That is accountability. That is too much responsibility, I believe, but it is accountability. The here die theory of criminality can explain how all the, this is black women's fault, but only STEM matters, so let, let me be quiet, right? You, you die, you're here means that they're going to have to commit crime. I mean, I agree with you, Sin, by the way. Like, oh, someone is reminding me. Thank you. I said I would say this. Please remember to subscribe to Sin's channel. It is pinned at the top of the comment section. Um, the revolution will not be televised. Please go over there um, and remember to subscribe. She's starting her new channel. I live... Well, I live walking distance from the police station and haven't been mass incarcerated yet. I don't sell or use drug or worse. Not even a ticket. <laughs> <In> period. <laughs> the way I was walking um, across the street and this police person, the policeman, I don't know why I said police person, came over to me because I was walking across the street and I was like, I'm about to get a ticket for jaywalking. And they were like, oh, hey, how are you? I was like, girl, I was frozen. But they were trying to find out if I was okay. Because um, apparently someone was walking behind me and they noticed. But the the person walked the other way. But yeah, I thought I was getting a ticket for jaywalking. You are, because you don't hear. Here's the thing. Because this is what you need. And the police thought I didn't know that someone was kind of following me, kind of not. I did notice. Which is why I was jaywalking. <laughs> not getting. It. It's not a choice that they're making because it's the best choice in the sense that when I do this, I'm going to get, I'm going to have an awesome life. You're already dealing with a group of people 
who are already at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. If this is true, why, why do black women do abortions more than any other group of people? Shouldn't they be having the most children then to take advantage of all the welfare? Because there's, there's numerous reasons for that too. For one, you have some women that genuinely don't really want to have kids. They like the party lifestyle. But the ones that do, they want to have those kids by a specific guy. Okay, because some guys are going to bring more benefits than others. Okay, when it comes to child support, there are chicks out here in the black community. They'll get pregnant by a guy. If a, if a chick gets pregnant by a guy that just enlisted in the military, she's not deleting that baby. It ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen because she knows that's she knows that's definite child support. And look, this is not something that everybody talks about in polite society, but it's something that goes on on a regular basis. I know this for a fact. I've I've had these experiences. Numerous men that I know have had these experiences. I even when I talked about this the other night on my show, there was a guy. Uh, Adam that was telling me that, well, that's not true. I don't believe that. And then I literally had a black woman come on to my show and say, yes, her family has even told her to do that because she doesn't, she, she's, in her, she's in her 20s. Um, she doesn't have any children. And at one point she needed a place to stay or whatever. And she said that the women in her family was basically scolding her. You need to go out here and find a guy that you don't really like like that. Get pregnant by him so that you can get, get all of the benefits that we get. They do this. I'm going to make this a standard. If I'm ever debating anyone, I'm not debating anyone ever, ever really, ever again. <clears throat> I shouldn't say that. But if I'm talking to someone and all they're giving me is anecdote, I'm just going to say that you're lying. No, I'm, I have to say you're lying. Because how am I going to verify this? It sounds so too fantastic. Like, I don't believe it. I know it sounds crazy, but they do this. This is one of the things that the men have, that the men in my culture have been constantly complaining about. And it's, it, it's, it's being treated like we're delusional. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, well, to complain about it as a guy. Just... I mean, is that wrong, though, if, if they're treating you like you're delusional for this? I feel like, I feel like that's... A... <laughs> He's birth control, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the smart guys out here, look, if you look at black guys out here, the smart guys... They're, they're not they're not out here getting a bunch of women pregnant they're not well where are they how are they getting pregnant because you have yo there's literally three guys in tennessee right now that have a total of 86 children by 34 different women there there are guys out here that have 10 children by, by five different women there are guys out here like when you what you just said is that there are some men that are reckless and causing running amok and creating havoc that's what you just said if if so few men can cause so much problem, particularly if these women don't know about each other. Yeah, you really can't blame the women for being fooled by this man. Like, they don't know. How How would they know? Nobody's plotting on him. He, just, he, just, he should feel safe. You look at you go look at the CDC stats. When it comes to the deadbeat dads, that actually represents a small percentage of the black male population's body. Sin said this, and I wish I could do what she did here, but I can't, so I won't even attempt. The fact that you're quoting the CDC, misquoting the CDC, and you're saying there are just a few children out here without fathers. Got it. All right. So most of these children have fathers. Um, we have solved the problem in the Black community. Uh, single motherhood is not a problem in the black community if most of these kids have fathers. If most of these fathers are in the home, there is not an issue of single motherhood and absent fathers. There can't be. If these fathers are in the home, there's not an issue. There, there can't be. You can say the problem in the black community is single motherhood while also having black men being in the home. You know, it doesn't work like that. So even with these men in the home, the kids are acting out. We still have the issue with single motherhood, even though these men, men are in the home. About 8%, right? So what's happening is you have a number of women that are basically having children with multiple guys, but it's a very small percentage of the male population. It's, it's, it's not all of us. So what's happening is you end up with you end up with these guys out here. And I can't name how many times I've heard this. And it's crazy. I didn't even know it was a reality. But I myself only have three children by one woman. Right. So you have these guys out here. You have three kids by one woman, Mr. Tradition. No. Are you married? You're not. Is this what we should expect from traditional men like you to have three kids, even by one woman and not be married to her? 
Is that your tradition? Got it. Got it. That's what traditional means to you. Got it. And it'll be like, yeah, you know, my dad had 19 kids. Why? Okay, or, then or, if, if women are choosing, if black women are choosing to get pregnant for the welfare and all that shit and child support, how, none of these women are getting child support then. If there's one guy knocking up like 30 fucking women, right? So why, why would they even do this? Why would they make these choices? Because the way, the, way that's, the way that system is structured, right? Even if you can't extract child support out of the guy, right? There are still numerous programs that you can get. I know a woman that had, um, I think she has like, I think she has like 10 children. Um, Habitat for Humanity gave her a house. He making this up. He making this up. He probably saw a woman win a house at, at some stage and just started adding stories to it, talking about he. So Habitat for Humanity gave one woman a house in his world. And what do you mean? Like, what does this mean generally? Women are having, women are having children to get a house from Habitat for Humanity. <laughs> The, these people don't even think. The these people don't even think. Like I feel like this don't make sense. Like as soon as you said it, you should have been like, you know what? I retract everything I just said. Let's move on. <laughs> what you said when you started talking about Egypt and Destiny asked you a question and you're like, let's not get into it. Let's move on. That's what you should have done here too. You should have, just be like, yeah, yeah, no, no. Let's just move. On. <laughs> Let's just for everything you say, you should just say, let's move on. Cause ain't no way. Ain't no way you're sitting up here believing this this is this is this is an argument. You you can't believe you're actually making a legitimate argument right now. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I think destiny, I think destiny paid angry man to come up there and look a fool. Y'all are not gonna convince me that this just happened naturally. I think Destiny paid Angry Man to come up there to look a fool. You're not going to convince me otherwise. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, but do you think that's the norm? That's not the norm, right? It's not the norm? That people are getting free houses for having kids in black communities? No, I don't think so. That's not the norm? Okay. Look. Well, here, I'm curious. I, I, how many... You know one woman that got a house from Habitat for Humanity. Destiny says that is not the norm. You are being confused, intentionally confusing yourself. That's not the norm. It's not the norm. Habitat for Humanity is not out here giving women houses for having children. Push presents. What do you mean? That is not the norm. Why are you acting flabbergasted? Like... That's not the no. No, I said it once very clearly. Why are you repeating what I said to you back to me? It is not the norm. No, it's not the norm. Habitat for Humanity is not here handing out house. Why are you sounding confused? Nothing I said was confusing. That's what you should have said. <laughs> If we, and I'm not trying to like, I need like 52.8%, I don't need like an exact stat, but like, how many women do you think in the black community that get pregnant? How many of them, like what, like roughly, what percentage of them are just like looking for a welfare check? Like just so I get an idea of like what you think the scale is. I, I could tell you how many are pregnant out of wedlock, which I think is a little above 70 some percent. But so far as their motive, that would be a little harder to pin down. Cause I'm not saying that all of them, what I'm saying is that is a, that is a cultural trend. And the reason why it's a trend is because you have women that will school their daughters to do that. Yeah, I guess I'm just curious, because like, I'm sure it's happened. I'm not gonna tell you it's never happened. But I'm just curious, mm. like, where do you think, like, do you think this is, like, 2% of the community, which would be pretty fucked up? Or do you think it's, like, 50% of the community that's, like, super fucked up? Uh, like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just curious what, the, what you think like, the number is. And then like, I'll do I've, research I've, on it later. I'll try to look it up, I guess. I've literally never thought about, because what, where, would you get, where would you get a census for that? Where, well, yeah, but the issue that? is that, like, yeah, I guess the issue is that you're content to blame, or it feels like it. I mean, I'm going to have a bad rating you're but it feels like you're content to blame the majority of the black community's problems on black women. But then you're relying on a lot of, like, I know a woman that told me this. I've got a friend that's done that. Like, and it's like, okay, but how do you know that this is representative of the black community as a whole? Or how do you know that like in different towns or cities, like this is how it works everywhere? Like it seems like numbers or census data on that would be pretty important. The reason why I know it is because every single time there's an issue, every single time there's an issue with Section 8. Right now, recently they just had an issue with Section 8 where a lot of the um a lot of the landlords in Atlanta have stopped taking Section 8. So guess what? Black women all across social media are crying about it. Um well, but that, what does that show? I mean, like if you, if you genuinely need the assistance, of course you're gonna cry about it, right? But no, it's not it's it's some that genuinely need the assistance, but it's a lot that continue to live on it. These are these are people that that live on the system the majority of their life. They're not, they're not using it in the sense that they're supposed to use it for where, oh, I'm down bad. I have some issues. Let me use this so that I can get on my feet.
that they're not doing that. What they're doing is they're, is they're looking and finding loopholes to continue to be on that system perpetually. That's, that's the problem. I, I mean, like, I mean, if you have a kid, you're going to be on the system. If you're a single mom, of course you will be, right? You're not going to try to like, get out of like Section 8 housing or assistance for your child. If you're a single mom, your kid turns like three years old, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just I don't see that like um, I, I don't see like single moms looking for assistance from the government uh, as like a negative well, thing. Here's, here's the thing. Hold, hold on one second. I got my guy, uh, Patriarchy, here. I'm going to bring him up. I didn't just want to bring him up and have you feel like I'm ambushing you or whatever. But... If I'm on a panel with you, I would have told you no. I would have told you no. I didn't know. Why? Why does someone named Patriarchy have to have to come up? No, 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 no. You can, you're a leader. You're a leader, right? You can lead. You can, you can do this on your own. You're a big boy. Like, I'm not doing that. I am not. I am leaving. As soon as you bring up someone else, I'm leaving. Absolutely not. You tried it. Yeah, I guess I know you want to get a piece of the conversation. What's Patriarchy, going on, what's, what's going, going on? on, man? Let me, uh, let me ask you a question, right? Uh, Destin, you said, um, you can't blame, I guess, the failures on the black community on black women. Is that what you said? Can you refresh that? For yeah, me? I don't even believe you can't like blame all the failures of black men on black women. I don't think that's fair. What about blaming the majority? Um, I don't think that's fair either, especially when it comes Why to child making, because it takes two to tango. It's men and correct, women. correct, right? But the thing is, if you're telling me that in certain parts of the world, as you said, they outnumber men three to one, why would you not then at least? I'm not saying blaming is going to do anything, but why would you not say that there's some responsibility? Now, where's Annalisa when you need her? <laughs> when the world needed you the most, where? Annalisa dragged this man so bad. <laughs> well deserved. I don't know if I can sit through his voice. Look, I have a terrible voice also. I love my voice. But people have said like my voice is annoying and elitist and blah, blah, blah. So like I understand that it's a, a, a deal. For people who don't like my voice, I don't get mad at them, right? It, it is what it is. His voice. <laughs> Let me try to skip through this because... Mm. For what it is that they're doing. Also, because the, the question, wait, let me just answer that. Because the question is, why do they outnumber men three to one? It's because a lot of the guys are getting locked up. Okay, and I, and I think that those are that, that is the man's fault as well, right? Sure. But in general, even outside of the men that are being locked up, when, there's one million more black women than there are black men, right? And in, and in your earlier statements, you said that they were the backbone of the community. If you have a backbone of a community and the community is failing, then I think you have some you have some ability to place responsibility on what you said that. No, it is holding up a community that you are letting go. You don't blame the thing attempting to hold up the community where you have exited. What do you mean? The first thing that Patriarchy wants to know is why he can't blame women. <laughs> right. And these are the this is the leader. I don't know what community patriarchy is a part of, but this is the leader. Backbone was. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, they're not the backbone because women want to be the leaders of the black community. But that's essentially what's happened really? in a lot of these communities. So, tell that tell that to the squad. That women don't want to be the leaders of the black community. It looks, as you said before, they're doing better in school. They're certainly making all the steps to become yeah, those. They leaders. do because they have to, because black men have failed them. Okay. Because black <laughs> men have <laughs> He was too matter of fact with that. I'm gonna need Destiny to chill out. <laughs> I'm gonna need I'm gonna need Destiny to chill out. He was way too matter of fact with that. Mm -mm. Nope, I feel disrespected. I don't. <laughs> he was too. <laughs> what else? The thing is, what else do you tell these men? Like, what else do you tell them? You don't tell them anything else. You 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 have to do what he just did. Rightfully, he was rightfully snatching wigs and taking names. <laughs> this is a rightful drag. Like, I'm in need of to chill, but like, not really. Because, like, you can like, when you come up there with this kind of aggression, talking about black women are the backbone and they, blah, 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 blah. all right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, y'all yeah, fail. That's why. What else? What else? At this point, they both should have just left. <laughs> at this, at this, point, they both let me drop the link because I, I, I got that. 
They're looking back to, to legislation from 30 years ago saying Biden put drugs in my car. I had to carry a gun. Like all of these communities that are being policed have just well, like we said earlier, there's more black women than black men in these communities. Black women are selling drugs. Black women are killing each other in the streets. Black women are you know getting fucked with drugs like Biden made them do. So to say that like black women are the fault because they're the backbones of these communities are really rough to manage because black men have like fallen on themselves so much. I just think it's fair to say that like well the problem is black women because they have have to step up to try to manage these communities. But it's as you say before, it takes two to tango. So if you're gonna, why don't you share responsibility in that blame? I don't disagree with you, right? I personally think Biden's crime bill was very effective in terms of lowering crime. But what I'm saying is that if you make up, if I go to a a, a community and you make up the majority voter base, right? Also, another reason why I think that the blame should be at least somewhat at somebody's feet is because who's consuming most of that welfare spending? Yeah, well, well, it would make sense to black women because black men run from their families, right? Okay. So, uh, no, that but, is- But also, real quick, when you, when you say, I just want to be really quick, but you can answer that, and I just want to be really quick. Um, I'm not going to say black women are blameless. You <laughs> said <laughs> they're running from their family. <laughs> oh my God, I need to call my dad. I'm gonna call my dad tomorrow and find out how, what, if he, uh, why he didn't run from his family. I'm just saying that so, yeah, the responsibility should be shared. It's probably 50-50 Because for every black man that stepped on a black woman after getting pregnant, there's a black woman that fucked a black dude before getting married or deciding to use birth control, right? So I think there's equal blame there. But I just, I wouldn't say that it's, I wouldn't say that it's like, uh, most of it goes on black women. I said it was 50 Well, here's the thing, here's the thing. No, no, because you said something. We got we to gotta clear that up. Black, yeah, men do not, black men do not run from their families. That, that's not, that is a total misnomer. And, and that is a, um, that, that is, that is something that is. Is it a misnomer? Is, is, is it a misnomer or is you calling it a misnomer the misnomer? Even if even if you're saying it's not true, you calling it a misnomer is still a misnomer. But I'm gonna leave you alone there because Sin already dragged you on that, so ain't no reason to drag you there. <laughs> it's been pushed for a very long time, and it is not accurate. As, as I stated before, when you go back to the '70s, you start to see black men leaving the households for numerous reasons. It wasn't just because they just decided, oh. You know what? I don't want to be a father. That's not true. They actually came out with a study, and the CDC numbers disproved that. So let's let's. Wait, CDC numbers disproved what? The, the black it household having single moms is not like a myth. It, like, like. It, no, I didn't say that. What I'm talking about, what I'm talking about, is nowadays black fathers are actually in their children's lives more than any other demographic, even if they're not in the household. So that is not what the stat says. It says when men decide to be in their children's life, that is what the stat was talking about. It wasn't comparing black men to other group of men and deciding which men are more involved in their children's life. That's not, no. There's an issue on generalizability. There's an issue in the study about, it's not even a real study, but there's an issue about um, who has multiple children and the fact that it didn't factor for when a man has multiple children. So, no. So no, come on, that's not true. Go look it up. I have looked it up. I know exactly, what, I know exactly the CDC, fucking media. Yeah. They, what they do is they do a whole bunch of like really clever number games to basically try to say that, um, um, I remember reading this thing, the truth about black fatherhood and then it goes to stereotypes of black fathers. What they try to say is that like, of the fathers that are absent in their child's lives, black fathers tend to be more involved than the other people that are uninvolved in their children's lives. But as a whole, for like whose fathers are more involved in their children's lives, the black community is the worst. Now of the ones that are uninvolved, maybe the uninvolved, or maybe the black fathers that are out of the household are a bit better than like the white and the Asian and the Indian black, or the Indian fathers that are out of the household. But as a whole, well, wait, wait, hold on. You can't, you can't, you can't tell me that like, it's a, wait, 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 let me just finish real quick. You can't tell me in one breath that I look around and I see all women are having children because I've got two friends that told me this for welfare. And then in the next breath say, well, I'm going to cite this like very esoteric analysis to prove that black men are just as involved with their children as everybody else when everybody in the United States knows that's not true. Yes, I, yes, I can. Because look, okay, first of all, when everybody. When everyone in the United States know that's not true. <laughs> like, that's embarrassing. Hey, Celestial. Hi, Venus. How are you? How are you? I am good. I'm being embarrassed. I'm getting sick. Destiny said everyone in the United States knows that's not true. <laughs> that black men are the most involved. <laughs> How are you? What do you have for us? Actually, Venus, I had a thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I was recently reading Toni Morrison's The Bluest Eye. Oh, loved it. Yes. And there was a part on that in the book that I remember when Charlie, I don't, the character Charlie was a young boy and he had an interaction with uh, two white men who were out looking for their hunting dog. And the breakdown of that scene that Tony outlaid in, in the book was that he knew that hating those men for humiliating him 
would have utterly destroyed him because he knew in that moment he was defenseless. Mm. He also knew in that moment that not only could he defend himself, but he couldn't defend the woman that he was with. So since he knew that hating or fighting against those who were humiliating him was virtually impossible in his mind, he turned outward and he began to hate the woman that he was with and actually wanted to get to the point of hurting her. So I say all that to say this, when I see angry man making this argument, when I see men in general blaming everything else and everyone else besides While claiming to be the leader. Exactly. Without doing, because they, in some way, I feel like they would have some type of a mental break, if I can say that, if they were to realize how they, they can't fathom going against their, their true opposition. They cannot imagine standing up to their true oppressor. So they have to compete with those who they, they feel are beneath them. They have to try and compare themselves. They, they, as you can see throughout our society, there's always this competition or this, this level of wanting to be like the oppressor instead of taking on building your own identity, building your own community. It's, it's either begging from scraps from the white man <laughs> Or and bones and biscuits, bones and I'm kidding, go ahead. exactly. So, does that make sense to you? That was just the thought that I had because I I was I love that book and I, I was just recently going through through it again because I haven't found any anything good to read lately. No, but no, I really sorry. I really um, really like your instincts there. Like I feel like it's very much on par with some of like what I've discussed and what I've thought talked about and why it, it would be easier to just hate and blame the women because well you can't protect like and it it has to affect you mentally like it it, it just has to and so the way you 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 sort of disassociate and um not really take responsibility so you're psychically you're you're protected is by externalizing because when men come on and say see black women are masculine that's why they don't get protection so you've never protect like what do you mean <laughs> yes mm-hmm. so yes. yeah but that was just my thought i was like maybe it's too outlandish but it's not i i just i just saw the the similarities and i'm like oh my gosh this is not this is not a new issue. Um, I know you've mentioned mahogany paint before. She's she's mentioned it before as well. And actually, instead of being outraged and and saying that they're delusional, now I'm I just look at these guys and I'm like I I could not imagine how broken you have to be to stand in front of this man who is in a way is the symbol of your oppressor and and to and to basically try and plead with them to understand when that really another problem. Yes. So that's all I had to say, but thank you so much. I love this show. This is so awesome. And it's so great to talk with you. No, thank you. I really, really, really appreciated your feedback here. Cause I, I think it's, it, it, it's, it represents the kind of deep analysis that I like. Um, so I, I truly, truly appreciate that. Um, and the last bit about trying to convince this man about Black women being the problem is so deeply troubling to me. Like It is so deeply troubling to sit there and have to have a white man look at you and say, sir, no, women aren't the problem. The black women in your community are actually struggling to put your community together. Who you should be blaming probably is me. He didn't say that, but like not him individually, but the white system. Mm -hmm. 
but you're not doing that. Instead, you're blaming, fighting, killing each other and killing the women in your community, abandoning the children in your community. And then you're running to this man. You literally have three children. You said your, your girlfriend was on child support at some point or another. And you are not saying you're traditional, but you are going to go to him. You didn't marry this woman. You didn't try to build anything with her. And now you are in front of this white man telling him that you are traditional and that women are the problem in the community and that you are somehow the leader and that men are like biologically predisposed to be leaders. Oh, you don't see the country. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. I was done. That was it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I, I believe that um, um, until we start um, walking away more, um, we're going to be the scapegoats. As a matter of fact, I, I was listening to um, someone who was talking about, what was it, Terrell Owens? He did the same thing. He blamed um, Black women for the reason why he's not with Black women, but he was also abused and misused by Black men, white women. As a matter of fact, what, he was accosted by a white woman. Oh, I saw um, that. Yes, but... I mean, it's always someone else's fault that you're not great. And I'm not going to run on, but I, I did want to make a recommendation to you for um, for two books that I think, well, not, they're not new, but I think you would find them very interesting. Um, have you read Sister Citizen by Melissa Harris Perry? No, I have not. Sister Citizen is is extremely good. It, it is, um, she bases it around... Um, their eyes were watching God. And the theme of the book is how Black women um, are, are basically in society in what, we, what she calls the crooked room. So we're gaslit into being told that things aren't what we see. And it's hard to get people to understand or believe us when we say things are the way they are because of how things have been systemically structured around us. And the other book I would like to recommend is Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. Um, this, she makes parallels between how um, the caste system in India, um, how it's, it kind of parallels to racism here in the United States. Also, she intertwines um, some personal experience that she's had with systemic racism. I believe she works for the New York Times. It's a, it's a wonderful book. I, I really enjoy it. And, and I think it, it gives a really great breakdown of how some people in this country are so hateful that they would literally vote against their own interests just to make sure that those um, but perceived to be beneath them won't have anything. She yeah. she told she told a story about uh, a white Republican who um, just so happened to be Republican, but he was poor and he was dying of cancer. But he said he would he would refuse to vote for universal health care under the guise that, well, hey, I may not have health care, but I'm not going to pay for that other guy to have health care either. And he died. Yep. And that was just an, a, an example that she extracted, but it's it's a it's a great read, a great read. Yeah, once you keep looking down, when you create a hierarchy, all you have to do is keep the people at every level to look down and try to secure their spot, and they will never try to look up and see that it's all a mess. Absolutely, I, I agree. Thank you. But I'm going to step down. Thank you so much for your time. You're so you too. I appreciate it talking to you. Thank you. Absolutely. You take care. Have a good night. You too. <clears throat> um, Dr. Katrina, leaders are readers, period. Period. There, there, is no, there is no excuse. There is no alternative like you have to. Hey, Fearest. Hi, Themis. How are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm well. So I'm not ready yet to debut the foundational points about the hair dye theory of criminality it will come one day not today though but it <laughs> all will right come one day the platform is open for you and the hair dye theory 
I'm just saying, well, maybe the reason why black men complain about wigs so much is because wigs allow black women to maximize the amount of hair dye that they use, thus allowing <laughs> white men to control black men and make them cause crimes and leave their families. <laughs> I can't wait for you to connect this with <laughs> <laughs> um, but like one of the major points that I wish that Destiny had pointed out early on was that in his search or quest or whatever he wants to call it for traditionalism, he's trying to chase after what white men established without actually knowing what and how they established it. Like if he's using the nuclear family as a, as his ideal, well women were also getting forms of education in the nuclear family. There were entire like, schools that were acclaimed for educating women to become wives. And it wasn't just about teaching them embroidery or how to sew and cook. It was mostly about teaching them philosophy, economics, finances. When they talked about women having to maintain homes, she was doing math. She had to learn how to read and create ledgers. That's what that is actually about. Also, the fact that women were expected to educate their children when they're young. And it also goes into like all of the things that came about that led into racism in the nuclear family and how it gained prevalence in like the 1920s with Darwinism. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there. So all of this brain is in here while you cut up in the chat. I feel like you are me. I feel like you are me. (laughs) Because let me tell you what happened. I put down the wigs and I put down the hair dye. (laughs) And black men started complaining. And I thought to myself, you know what, black man? I do think that you are dumb and a bit ugly, not because you're black. That's just an individual feature of it. But I do sympathize with you a bit. I will put down the wigs and the hair dye to hear you out. Is that why you're cutting up in the chat? I wasn't cutting up in the chat. I was being very respectful. All you do is send in super chat dragging. Meanwhile, you come up here. Yes, I would like to pre- provide my thesis and then defend my dissertation afterwards. I went, what? I mean, well, what I was going to get into was like leading into Darwinism that also fed into racism was that they actually believe that the kind of woman that you ended up with and procreated with, they're... Um, their qualities would carry on to your children. So yeah, they wanted educated women because they didn't want their kids to be dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, no, no, no. So all this pushback against women getting an education, how? <laughs> it's, it's funny because if slave masters didn't want the slaves to have an education either. No, they didn't. And then he goes on and he talks about like, well, the only ones who are in the church are um, are hoes. And it's like, okay, are you a born again Christian or something? Because it's given stillborn. <laughs> like most of the men who go into church are there because women make them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can attest to that. My mom dragging my dad to church. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe after this chat, I'll call my dad. And I'll ask him, Daddy, why didn't you abandon your family and your <laughs> Are you sure that you're black? No, I'm going to call my mom first and then call my dad. I'm going to three-way them. It's like, why are you calling all of us out the one? Just call one phone. But I'm going to do it because I'm going to call my mom and talk to her about submission and then ask my mom about why my dad, why she, he didn't abandon but That's like- what I'm going to do after this. I think that Cynthia G should open back up her wig sponsorship. I think that she should offer <laughs> wigs to yeah, black men and a free <laughs> and a free bottle of hair dye. Because I don't know the way that he's like trying to subscribe to white supremacy right now. Like maybe they need some extra help. 
Yeah. And in the background, I will be working on the hair dye theory and also the wig theory of criminality to help her along because <laughs> I like her channel. <laughs> <laughs> please, please go do that. Um, I do actually need because didn't um Petty win the hair the wig? <laughs> I don't remember something about Petty requesting that he got the wig. <laughs> I think that Cynthia, I think Cynthia G respects Petty, so she's trying to keep white supremacy away from him, so she's not going to send him the wig right away. <laughs> I don't think no respect Petty. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I respect. I respect I, him I have too. tremendous respect for Petty. He held us down when you were gone on your milk run overseas. <laughs> Seeing your other family. <laughs> All he did was drag me, and for the rest of his days on the shuttle, he will be dragged. Continue. <laughs> well, that's all that I wanted to say until I go on the super chat and drag again. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Thank you so much for coming up. Uh, Gabrielle, Gabriella. Hi, good. Um, good evening. I love your show. I just want to say before I start. And um, say what I'm gonna say. I love your show. It's such Are you a Jamaican? Great... I'm not Jamaican. <laughs> I get yeah. I get told um, I get asked if I'm Jamaican all the time. I'm not Caribbean. No. No. Gotcha. No. Um, I, I do want to say that I do love your show. I appreciate what you do 100%. Thank you. Um, your show is such an eye opener, and um, Cynthia G's show and your show are just amongst the few. Um, YouTubers or shows that all black women should watch. Anyways, I also want to say thank you to the woman that came um, prior to the woman that just left for recommending those books. I'm definitely going to check them out. We might um, be reading some of them in the um, in the book club. Continue. Okay, nice. I I really I really love it. Okay, so um, I I just wanted to say that. If this isn't an eye opener to black women everywhere, this is just not in an, in America. This is in the Caribbean and African Europe of the um, of the pathology and of just of the pathology of black men in general. I don't know what is um, the women that you know the, the the guy that angry man or whatever his name is is directly speaking about. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's it. He's speaking about the women that support black that have an undying loyalty to black men that support them 100 percent that were marching for the black men that protect the black men you know just they have such an undying support for black men but look at how he's talking about them you know he's really talking about the black women who live you know in the ghetto the inner cities and those are the black women that have you know an undying loyalty to them that are not going to report them to the police that continue to um, reproduce with them and get in relationships with them. But look at how he's dragging them and, and blaming them and, and saying that you are the reason why the black community is in the predicament that it is in, that it is in right now. I think uh, in looking at some of, I think there might be a lot of resentment from them to these women because they represent these men's failures. I, I, I um, the young lady who was celestial, I think it was, was pointing this out, and I do agree with her. Sorry for cut. Oh, no, 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 come back. Ask him why he wanted to be a man. <laughs> oh, well. Hey, Navi. Hi, it's actually Novi, but okay. Oh, Novi, go ahead. Sorry. Yes. <clears throat> One word I have to say is audacity. Mm -hmm. Audacity. Like you would think Wakanda is being built in this instance. Like mm -hmm. I'm just shocked. Mm -hmm. Like the one thing that keeps popping in my mind is that you would think, like, what did Zinke say? She said that they don't even have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. <laughs> Why you're quoting sin? Please remember to click the link at the top and go subscribe to her channel. Go ahead. Yes, I will. And it's like I live in South Africa. Okay, I'm from there. Like, yeah. And I'm like, these men, the pre like literally black people in these spaces, being the in the government, the cabinet, police men, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, they don't give a fuck even with each other, they don't care. And then they expect us to care. And I was just like, what? 
Do you want to know? I don't think a lot of men know, well, they know generally, but like, I don't think a lot of people know that the leading cause of like death for black men is homicide at the hands of other black men. Cause like every time that comes up, people seem, see, people act surprised. So I don't know if they know, continue. And then, and I see this a lot. I don't know why I'm even in these spaces. Ugh, I'm appalled by myself. Ugh. Is that <laughs> we are like mess. <laughs> they say that basically civilization civilizations end basically due to like gay people and single moms. And I'm like, what? You ended, your civilization ended because you got colonized. Hence, we're here having this conversation. Like, I don't understand. <laughs> I think they, again, they'll blame anyone, not civilization, and because of the homosexuals. <laughs> they literally was like, oh, gay people, and this is why the civilization crashed. And I'm like, says the person who didn't even invent a gun. You guys had spears, they had guns, we lost. Hence, we're here. <laughs> Wait, where's your accent from, by the way? I have, like, the thing called the Model C accent basically is the accent that we're taught in like private schools to have here. Period. You better, you better let us know. It's an L, it's an elite drag. Go yeah. Ahead. I won't interrupt again. I apologize. Even the politics here. And then I love how they'd like to draw parallels to like, let's say, Black American men's problems, and I'm like, wait a minute, just wait a damn minute. It was like you guys are the minor. The, you're literally the majority of the country. You literally, you are in. You've been. We have okay. It hasn't even been thirty years since you got our democracy. I'm twenty, so I'm like I'm one of the first few generations to actually get quote unquote freedom. And it's just so astounding where they don't even realize how psychologically they're so affected by this. And this is my unpopular opinion. I feel like Africans are in denial about how psychologically colonialism has affected us. They like they're so in denial. Yeah, especially I mean, Umar, when Dr. Umar just came out and said, um, you need to go to Africa where they weren't touched by colonialism or white supremacy. And I was like, girl, what? <laughs> what do you mean? You, he said you can That's go to the Caribbean to get a black person who hasn't been touched by white supremacy or colonialism. And I was like, what? Not the Caribbean. That don't make sense. So. I literally, okay, I don't know why I have so much access to the internet when I was young. I was literally in those hotel spaces i know i know don't don't oh no i don't, no, I don't judge you i was uh, i was i was in my hotel era and i, I was gave, i gave umar money and when i look back at it i'm like the delusions the delusions like a lot of them would be so hyper focused on egypt and i'm like what does egypt you are from west africa nine <laughs> times out of ten you are literally from west african descent. what does this have to do with you Girl, you, don't let them know that we weren't all we weren't kings. Some of us, some of us, as, were, a, as a peasant, I speak. Some of us were fishermen and farmers and thieves. Some of our forefathers were thieves. <laughs> and then I love how they frame Africa like there was no hierarchies, no one had to pay taxes, we're just frolicking naked. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> We are running through the jungle naked, drinking lips off the is drinking mango <laughs> juice off the lips of poor kings. <laughs> That's what we were doing before colonization. We were running through, <clears throat> we were running through the jungles of Africa naked, drinking mango juice off the lips of poor king, and that is Bible. And I was just like, "What are these people talking about?" Weird. <laughs> As I stay in African, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm gonna be over there soon. I will. I will see y'all soon. You I don't come know to Cape Town. I am. I South Africa is on my list. 
so I have a list of places I want to be, and then I want to go to. Let me tell you where I have a list. Give me two seconds. Um, nope, that I can't pull it up. It's the I want to go to South Africa though, so I will be there. And one of the leaders was actually begging for Elon to fix the electricity problem here, and I'm like, you're asking the white man, <laughs> the white man. And I'm just Wait, they definitely can ask. They should definitely ask. They broke it. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. There's even a saying in my language that's like a black person's medicine is a white person. I'm like, this is how fucked up it is. And I was just like, what? Demons, please do a video asking Uma for a refund. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I have faith in Umar still. I have faith in Umar like the rest of y'all have faith in. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's how they got conquered. They were weak from trying to survive on off mango juice. Ta. All right, I'm coming to Cape Town, so please remember that you invited me. You said, no, no V. Yes. Period. I got it. Um, <laughs> final thoughts. My final thoughts are these men are delusional and black women, please let this Wakanda never, never land. Please let this go and do what's in your best interest. Whatever decisions that you can live by, please. Thank you. I appreciate you. And to all you men, I say, please, we have to stay delusional. <laughs> That's how we build. <laughs> right, let me stop. <laughs> Thank you so much. Gabrielle, you got cut out, I think. <clears throat> I did get cut out. Um, it was my fault. So I'm not such a I I'm not as tech savvy as I think I am sometimes. So that was that was on my part. Um, like I was saying, so most of these black women that support men like Angry, whatever his name is, and uh, the patriarchy guy that came on the on his podcast are the black women that they're speaking of. You know, it's not black women like me or black women who watch you and sin. We're not supporting them. We're not for them. We're not marching for them. We're not um, saying police brutality is the reason for their demise or the government and all this stuff that they say. The women who support them the most are the women who they despise. And that says a lot about them. And I will echo what the young lady who came up here first said. I think, <clears throat> first of all, I can't understand how you would hate the thing that is trying to help. And then when you think about the person who is like putting their life and limb on the line for you, I, I do think I want to talk to a psychologist and a sociologist separately about like what that is that causes people who have, who are people who are, who have failed to see people who choose them as also failures and resent the people who choose them because they don't like themselves. Um, and what that internalized kind of self-hatred then externalize what that, what causes that and maybe how to fix it. Cause girl, anyway, th this can't be life. It can't. And unfortunately I had um, more hope in black women and every single day I'm starting to realize that there's no hope. It's there's literally we're so many black women are so they're they're in too deep. There's no, I don't understand what kind of chain they're under, what kind of what kind of chain that they're chained to, what kind of spell they're under, but they will not stop defending black men. They will not stop dating black men. They will die on <laughs> on the cross <laughs> that, you know, probably that Jesus was crucified on and uh, get crucified and, and say that, you know, not all black men are the same. While they stand up there, sit up there and say that all black women are the same, mm -hmm. that it's our fault, 
that the community is how it is. And they call themselves the leaders of the community. Unfortunately, I think, and and <clears throat> I think there needs to be a separation around the the ideas that are espoused. But when it comes to like, when it comes to the ideas around like, I'm sorry, Demas. Um, I'm, no, I'm so sorry fine. not to cut you off, but C. Joe J. just stated and said, "You don't need to stop dating all black men." You date the right black man, black men. So tell me, C. Joe J. No, 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 nope, nope. Because what's happening here is a disconnect. If people believe they they should date, I think people can date whoever they want to date. That's on them. The question isn't about. Well, there is a racial question, but there is also a question about subjugation and choosing to be who you are, regardless of who you're with. And I think part of the problem is that women have not gotten out. I believe, not advice, I believe one of the problems with the relationship is that men expect women to be submissive and women expect men to lead them. That is trash, I think, generally. Um, and it doesn't matter the kind of the race of the man you're with. If the dynamic is one of worshiping without standards, sin would say standard expectations and boundaries. If you are going in that relationship, it don't matter the race of man, in my mind. And that's what, matter. and that's how most black women look at, you know, black love relationships. I yeah. mean, if that wasn't how, if that wasn't the case, then there wouldn't be such a high, you know, femicide rate in the black community and the thing is for me on this i still have faith not even faith i actually don't believe dr umar is going to build anything but i do hope that he does so me i can't be that delusional and then be telling women that um this is the answer or that is the answer because i'm very no i completely I, understand i know i completely understand where you're coming from but as a woman and i'm foreign born I see, I see this exactly in multiple men of different cultures that have that don't that aren't even Black American, that have never set foot in America, that have the same mentality. I think and, my worry. Let me be clear about something because I don't, I don't know if I've ever had the uh, no. Because usually it's a man who is like, "You are divester, you are divester channel." And, oh, and I'm not even pro divester, as well. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I think part of the problem with just speaking, let me not even say, talk about the problem. I think you have to have self-respect and develop yourself and bring those boundaries with you wherever you go. Be that with black men, white men, Asian men, whatever, or women, or women, whoever you are with, even in friendships, you need to set these boundaries and you need to have standards and you need to be willing to walk away when things aren't being met. And I'm not going to tell you to stop doing this or doing that in terms of dating. I can't do that. that I, that's out of pot. That would be way out of line for me. 100%. And I, and I respect that. Yeah, I, I agree with you. You shouldn't do that because then, you know, yeah, you're right. Yeah. But, um, my final thoughts are on this. And I also want to add that I've been on, I don't know, um, I've been on a couple of, one more um, panel because I, I, I had to call in, but it's like Urugu. I, I, he's um, the search for Urugu or something like that. that that's his name. And um, he had a panel that was super interesting of um, black men. They were speaking specifically on black women and basically blaming, doing the same thing that angry man um, is doing blaming everything on black women, you know, um, we're trying to, to get, to get, um, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just no, you're fine, you're I'm fine. having a brain fart right now. I'm like doing multiple things. Um, trying to get custody of their child, the government, the, the, the court system won't allow us to get, uh, custody of our, our children and all these excuses is always all these excuses that they have. You know, it's never a solution, just excuse after excuse after excuse of why they can't do something, why they can't establish something. It's been all these years. Anyhow, 
thank you so much for having me. And me too. I I appreciate that. I I I also hate excuses. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I also hate excuses. Like it's my pet peeves. Like the, the, hey, don't come to me with excuses. But before we go, we're gonna go into the after show. We're gonna go to Kendra G for some mess before we go. Because my Discord definitely gave me some Kendra G mess that I need to share with y'all. Um, there's not a lot of commentary here. We're about to go because I said under four hours and it's three hours and 43 minutes. So we have, we, we have to. <laughs> I, know, I know what that is. guy hello good evening G good yeah. evening have you been here before about two years back okay go to, don't be too close to them like i gotta get away from the middle be more censored there you go oh you was here two years ago what's your name my first name is coquito what's your name honey coquito is that what i called you two years ago too coquito yeah how did it go two years ago i'm not gonna lie wait okay you, you had a lot of people um go on my dms i was impressed i ain't gonna lie um i met one young lady but she was all the way in Virginia, so we couldn't really, um, well, we couldn't really, uh, how should I say, pursue the relationship like we wanted. So it happens. Okay, so let me get to know you again. Coquito, where are you calling me from? Durham, North Carolina, Raleigh, Durham. Raleigh, is that is that Hispanic? My parents are from Cuba, yes. I'm okay, Afro okay. Do you live in Raleigh, North Carolina? That's right. Okay. How old are you? I'm 33. I turned What does Coquito mean? Little coconut. Oh, okay. So got me out here saying some bad words and shit. Nah, I don't do that. <laughs> Big penis, Coquito. <laughs> don't be, I don't know. I don't know all these languages. Y'all gotta be saying great stuff. All right, Coquito, Raleigh, North Carolina. You're 33. That's right. Do you have any children? I got one little girl. She's six. Six. Have you ever been married? I was married before. That's right. When'd you get divorced? I was a kid. It was back in. This was back in 2014. I was in the military. Okay. Yeah. Um. What, what's your job now, honey? What's my job now? What do you do for a living? So I'm not gonna lie. I'm a waiter. I'm a waiter at a cafe. What's wrong um, with being a waiter? You have a job. Right. I mean, this is what it is. Um, I still get paid. I still get residual income from the military, so I'm I'm well off. I'm okay. I'm good. Okay. Okay. You have a job. You probably so. Coquito, Coquito, right? You could just say Coqui. 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 Riley, North Carolina. He's Cuban. Thirty three. He has a daughter that's six. He's a waiter. Also, is retired from the military. Thank you for your service. What kind of woman are you looking for, babe? I want a female, a girl. At a season, at a season age, I, I want a seasoned woman. Say again. I like a woman that's seasoned. Crystal, love, welcome to the membership. I promise I thought he said he wanted a seasoning woman. And what is that? What's that? What age is season to you? I say from ages 36 and 36 to uh, early 50s. 36 to 50. So you want an older woman for sure? That's right. Any particular reason why? I feel like, I ain't gonna lie, I be talking mad shit. Excuse my language. I be talking a lot of shit about girls my age and below. I just feel like, I just feel like they explore too much. They, um, I feel like a lot of them, they, they, they have unrealistic standards. In contrast to an older woman, I feel like she gives me more grace. The older woman gives more grace than the younger woman. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Okay. They will. Okay. So you want an older woman because she have children. Yeah, that's fine. All right. What about where okay. I want you to. You want who? You. I want you to. You. No, where, who are you talking to? I'm talking about you. I want you to. Who, where's she at? Where, who? <laughs> who? Is somebody else on the screen? Where the other girl on the screen? You got children? Baby, I, I'm, I'm not available. And if I was, we, we, no. I would have been there, Candy. No, you you wouldn't have. That baby wouldn't fall life. That baby would stay in heaven. I would tell Jesus, keep the baby there. I'm the by, <laughs> no, it wouldn't happen. Baby would just stay in heaven with Jesus naked in my ass. Um, are you ready to find a woman that might want to meet you? Nah, uh, -uh I, um, it definitely giving little Wayne. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little nervous as far as as far as committing. So I don't think so. I don't think I'm ready for all that. Unless unless she tell me she's ready to commit, she gotta let me know first. And then I'll take that extra step. But as of right now, I, I ain't gonna make that kind of effort. Baby, what are you doing on my show tonight? What what, what is your goal, honey? I can, like I said, I came I came on your show to look for a woman who's like at a seasonal age that I can get to know. Okay. So yeah. do you want to continue? Let's continue. Okay. Um did I ask you if she has a little Girl, why did this man take this hat off? I think they were probably in the comments telling him to take that off. Now you have a job. Stop. Y'all need to stop. Everyone go to bed. This is the after show. Y'all are not, y'all are too young. Look a certain way. 
Nah, we ain't say that. Um, I like my women black. I like them brown skin. Um, I like something about a woman that's a little wide, like thick, but a little wide. I like that too. I like I like baldies. I like girl that's bald headed. I like dry head girls. I like brown women. I never had a white girlfriend. I never really dabbled on that area, but um, yeah, I just stick to black females. I never even had a Hispanic girlfriend. So yeah, she got. So yeah, I favor a lot of black females. I, you know, plus if you big, plus if you black. Okay. Uh, like, yeah. Does women have to make a certain amount of money? I don't care about your money. Any, if, if a guy, if, let me tell you something. If a guy say, if a guy say he, a, a woman got to make some kind of money, that nigga lying and he a chump. Don't nobody, don't no man care about a woman's money. And, and give us a theory why that's true. Because, um, in, in, in that way, it kind of seems like a man is competing with his, with his woman, and don't no man want to compete with his woman. A man want his woman to be his peace. You know, she she already competing with her job. He already competing in his job. So we ain't, we ain't about to compete at home. And if he want to do that, then um, then his money not in the right place. Nah, I'm not about to I'm not about to worry about a woman's income. I'm good. So she can make more than you. That went about you. No, nah, huh? Okay, nah, fair man. enough. Let's do the Kendra Cam. Right. Oh shit. Oh, you have a lot of tattoos. Are your arms full of tattoos? I got a whole body piece. You wanna see? No, I don't. You wanna see my print? Do you want me to hang uh, up on you? Let me stop, let me stop. <laughs> no, I mean like seriously, you now I'm gonna hang up because I gotta start teaching y'all that there's gonna be some type of level of respect here. And I know, and listen, let me say this. Let me say, let me say this. I know that. Girl, that too late. Too late. Oh. Let's move on. Oh. Hello. Oh, well, yeah. Hello. 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 What's the deal? Oh, child. You ready? Hello. You ready? Let's get it going. What's What's the name, baby? My name is Tim. Police walking. Are the police walking? Are you in jail? You're in jail? Yeah. Get it going. Baby, what the hell are you gonna offer a woman? You in jail. How long are you in jail for? Two years. Two, two years. So what are you gonna do for a woman on my show, baby? You locked up for two years, honey. I'm looking for somebody generous. Gen oh, generous. What, 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 what do you want from a generous woman? <laughs> Kendra plays too much. She should have ended the call right there. She should have ended the call right there. <clears throat> I need a generous woman that want to look that want a good young man. How old are you? Thirty five. All right. So you said you want to find a woman who is generous, who wants a good young man. Young, no, good, questionable. You're in jail. So you don't even qualify. <laughs> what you do to go to jail? <laughs> Negro, this ain't how to think you on a live show. They gonna see your ass. You're too about to become five. You're gonna get more time after this. Huh? We looking for a pen pal. You wanna look? that you could DM and write letters to. Write to me. And what's so crazy, let me tell you something, because you're not the first man that's on my show that's been, that's in jail. So so you're not the first. But you know what's so crazy? Because you're attractive, women are actually going to hit you up. And this is how you know that women, women, this is going to be on you. He is all the way in a whole jail. He can't take you out on a date for two years. Yes. Yes, I can. How? How do you think about it? Personally. How? Not personally. Somebody gonna stand in for you? How you thinking around the date while you in jail? Show me, explain this date to me. Call me. Baby, I'm talking to you right now. This ain't a date, this is a conversation. 
No, I'm just not saying you to call me, but I'm just saying they gotta call me. So when they call you, the how do you take them out on a date and you in jail for two years? Easy. All you gotta do, we gonna go on a virtual date. Oh, a, a, a virtual date. Correct. Oh, explain to me how a virtual. What, what, what is your name? What's your name? Chase. Chase. And how old are you? Say thirty. What? <clears throat> The fact that you're in a whole jail trying to give face, like you're he's literally trying to give face in <laughs> I don't know how many times this man done bite his lips. I don't know. How many times this man bit his lips and is trying to give you face, 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 yah. He said his face card never declines, my God. <laughs> and he's on there. If you don't have anything, you have audacity. To sit up on line looking for someone and saying that you want a generous woman while you're in jail. This is audacity. The, if you are the woman who goes to this man, you don't have self-esteem. And that is so unfortunate. You need help. He needs help, but you also need help. You, anyone going to this man, need, this man should be sorting his life out. He's going to be out in two years. <laughs> he will be out in two years. He needs to find, oh, wait, this is him sorting his life out. Wait a minute. Wait, meanwhile, I'm dragging him. I shouldn't. I just feel like this is him sorting his life out. This is his attempt. I, 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 <laughs> Good night, y'all. Ain't no way. It, absolutely no way. I am done. Remember the guy in jail with his virtual dates? I cried. Kendra should have hung up. He is not someone that should be in the show. I agree. I agree, but she said we're about to clip it and go viral. <clears throat> I'm done. I think I think I think this is where um <laughs> See, Miss having an epiphany. No, I was like, you need to figure out your life and try to figure out what you're gonna do when you get out. And I'm like, oh wait, wait, yeah, that's what you're doing right now. Got it. Period. <laughs> Period. I'm done. I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go and make myself some drinks and go to bed. Um, I'm not going to go to bed. I'm going to stay up and watch interview with a vampire all night. I'm going to finish the season. Um, women only want men for their money, right? That's period. I think I'm done. Whew. Oh, someone said good night, handsome. Thank you. Make yourself a cookie though. <laughs> Have a wonderful night. Um someone said that's a great great series. I I should probably go to prison and talk to some people and create a documentary. Themis need to start virtual dating since you don't want to go out. LOL. I will start virtual dating. I'm going to put up a sign-up sheet and we're going to have one-on-one -on -one dating. Just sign up for the dating. <clears throat> and it'll, we'll have Zoom dates. Little light bill, baby. Period. He can't even pay that. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to go. Remember to go over Sin's channel. She's building her new channel. I will be over there. Um, thank you all so, so much for the love and kindness that you've showed me through the years. It has been multiple years that I've been on here, and the fact that I can still go and that y'all show up is amazing. So I, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it, one. And two, um, if nothing else, I do hope that I am. I do hope that people learn to think more critically about what it is that they're consuming and judging people. Um, judging people in in specific. 
<laughs> Someone zoom speed date period. Um, and and hope that when we are judging people that we we do so with some level of grace. That's the one thing. And grace does not mean you have to be a doormat. I mean be as kind as objective and deferential in your judgment as you can be. I'm saying that because of my Discord. I'm gonna go back to my Discord and get dragged, but um my Discord and I are in a in in a, in a fight. We are locked in in battle. <laughs> we are locked in battle for the soul of the Discord, and we'll see who wins. I will let you know who wins. Oh, next week might be an in person. Next week Friday might be like one of the most amazing live streams, or one of the worst live streams. So it is going to be one of the most amazing live streams, or the worst. I promise you, I can't explain. I can't explain what it is because I can't give it away right now. But next week is going to be fire or trash. It is fine. But we're going to see. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. And come November and December, the holiday seasons, we are going to get into the holiday spirit. We are going to get into the holiday spirit. If I have to drag everyone into the holiday spirit, we're getting into it. So come ready to be in the holiday spirit next month. All right. Bye. All right. I actually do have to go.